Summer is almost over, and here in the Deep South, that means one thing, and it's time for college football, the parade, the pageantry, the religion that is college football, coming to you from Birmingham, Alabama. We call it the Magic City. What a beautiful shot of downtown Birmingham, and you can see your matchup. It's game one of the season. The Alabama State Hornets coming up from Montgomery to take on the UAB Blazers. They are the defending Conference USA champs. Hello, everybody. My name is Kurt Bloom, along with my broadcast partner, Chad Pelcher. And I know, partner, you couldn't wait for this game to get started. College football is back. It is exciting to be here at Legion Field for this exciting matchup for two teams in the state of Alabama. And in the state of Alabama, Louisiana, wherever it is in the Deep South, coaches more and more are taking on their intrastate rivals, aren't they? Yeah, these teams get an opportunity to play. You have big fan bases. They have the opportunity to drive a short drive and to see some really good football. And tonight we get to do it here to kick off the season on a Thursday night. We'll start with the visitors, the Alabama State Hornets. They, in order to improve, they have to do better offensively. And, of course, when it starts offensively, it's with the quarterback, Kadarius Davis. Yeah, the Alabama State offense last year was number 118 on all of FCS football. Did not perform to the level that they expected, but they're returning 10 starters this year, and the biggest is right there, Kadarius Davis. Last year, he threw for 961 yards through the air. He rushed for 123 yards in six starts. He's looking to improve as he moves into this junior season. For UAB, they're going to look to run the ball throughout the night. They averaged over 200 yards rushing last season, and they feature Spencer Brown, the outstanding tailback. He rushed for over 1,200 yards last year. He has over 2,500 yards in his career and 26 touchdowns, and he needs just 262 yards to become the all-time leading rusher in UAB history. It's just 90 miles that separates the two teams from Montgomery to downtown Birmingham. We'll see if they're miles apart or not by the end of this game. Alabama State against UAB from Legion Field. Great shot right there. We'll be back with tonight's broadcast after this timeout. The signal. Stand up. Stand up. Continue the conversation. You are not alone. Let's take a look at our temp. Alabama State and UAB live from Legion Field in Birmingham. And we're going to look at our weather on just a gorgeous night. 80 degrees, humidity only 40%, which is rather low by southern standards. And a wind from the north at just six miles an hour. How about that last column? That's the one for me. Zero percent chance of rain. Chad, did you bring an umbrella? Did not. It is a beautiful <laughs> night. Everything you could hope for for the season opener for two teams that are excited. We've got a great crowd here tonight. Beautiful uh, weather, and we are ready to go to kick off the 2019 college football season. Alabama State will get the ball first. Nick Vogel, the place kicker for UAB. And the 2019 season is officially underway. It'll be a kick to about a one-yard line and a return coming up, but we got a flag before we even get started. Duran Bell had it. Fair catch by Alabama State, so they'll take the ball on the 25-yard line, and this offense will come out looking to get something going early to really spark Alabama State here in this football game. The underdog, Chad, in any sport, they got to come out early and make a statement. When it's college football, there are two things that Alabama State doesn't want to do. They don't want to turn it over, and they don't want costly penalties early. And early. Even a three and out, Chad, is okay your first set of downs. Yeah, just want to control the at tempo and take care of the football. And a simple start with no gain. Ezra Gray on the carry. And Gray, just shy of 800 yards on his career. He's going to be a feature back. He is dynamic in the return game, but going to touch the ball a good bit from the backfield as well. Quarterback again, Kadarius Davis, as Chad highlighted from Bessemer. So only a couple of minutes from Legion Field. Pass complete. Short of a first down. 
Gain of eight, it'll be a third down play coming up. And they're getting the ball out to his tight end, Larry Brown, for a quick hitter. And that's a nice play call by this Alabama State offensive staff. Get the ball in the flat, quick in the hands, get a nice pickup and make it a very manageable third down for Davis. Brand new year for the UAB defense. They were one of the best in the nation last year. And that's going to be short. UAB bunches up early right in the middle of that line. And Garrett Marino in on the tackle. We're going to be saying his name all night long. He was an honorable mention all-conference player last year. He is a dominant force on this defensive front for this UAB defense. Only three guys back from that defense last year that was so outstanding. But Marino is a key factor. Comes up with a big tackle there He's on third down. He's a senior, a senior leadership type guy. You want to have a senior at each level if you can. One on your line, one on the linebackers, and then preferably also at least one in your secondary. So Alabama State will punt a high snap. And this will roll out of bounds and around the 16-yard line where UAB will go on offense for the first time. Look at the active home winning streaks, and you get to number eight. You don't have to go to top uh, uh, top ten, even higher than that, since re resurrecting the program, since starting from scratch, 12 in a row here at Legion Field. Have not lost since the return of this UAB football program. You see the names included in that list. They've had an outstanding home field advantage that they're looking to continue here this season. Well, in the backfield for the Blazers, their quarterback, Tyler Johnston, and their running back, Spencer Brown. We should see a lot of Brown, as we do here. Brown may be back to the line of scrimmage. Give him a couple on the play, second down. Brown, six foot, 230 pounds. He's strong, he can lower his shoulder when he needs to, but he can block, he can really run, and he's just been a total package now in his junior season for UAB. Tyler Johnston rarely goes under center. And a motion for the Blazers. Brown with an open. Out to the 40. And he doesn't need much room, but when he gets it, he takes advantage. That time just runs off tackle. Nice job of blocking up front, get a good kick out right there. And Brown follows the block, gets up field, a nice stiff arm, and then gets all the way up to the 40-yard line. Natron Culpepper on the tackle after a gain of 19. Brown actually came out after that play just to get a blow. Jonathan Hayden running back, and that's Hayden. To the outside for good yardage and another first down. Little change of pace in terms of the speed with Hayden versus Brown. Oh, he, can, he can move, gets to the outside, a little speed option to the left side. Nice pitch there by Johnson. That allows Hayden to get to the outside. And this UAB offensive staff has talked about how important Hayden is. We know Brown's going to be the feature guy, but to have a, a changeup to come in there like Hayden with so much speed, that's a big weapon for this Blazer football team. Johnston. Looking for a man at the 10, caught. Austin Watkins on the reception. UAB lost a lot of depth at the wide receiver position. They're looking for guys to step up. Watkins is a guy who played in four games last year but ended up redshirting into the season with seven catches, and that's a big one to start the season. He's going to be a feature guy in this offense, just a straight post route, nice throw and catch. UAB on the move from the 11. They can get a first down without scoring. And Johnston on the keeper. Johnston towards the end zone. He's in, but there is a flag. If it holds, it's an 11-yard touchdown for the quarterback. They're going to get below. Oh, 
from the spot of the foul, Remains first down. Yeah, they call Tyre Blakes the tight end on the hold. He was blocking out on the edge. That's what allowed Johnston to get to the outside and get into the end zone. But the flag comes out, and that's going to negate that touchdown. You see Johnson keeps it the outside. There's Blakes on the edge, and they get it right there. Good call by the officials. Got the jersey right up around the shoulder. And that's going to bring this back to the 17-yard line. Spot foul, so first and 10 at the 17. Brown back in the game. Johnston. Complete. That's Watkins again, inside the five. Alabama State playing man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary. That's the second time the UAB has gone to Watkins. He's been able to get inside and win those battles both times. Nice job using his hands, bringing in the football. And that puts UAB inside the five-yard line. Couple of men in motion. Everything stacked to the left. And Brown comes up just short of the goal line. He has 26 career rushing touchdowns. And on that play, he didn't get into the end zone, but he picked up a first down. So it's going to be first and goal just inside of the, the one-yard line for UAB. And look, Spencer Brown, he's got an opportunity to break a number of UAB records. The school record for touchdowns is 35, so he's on the cusp of that and several others coming into this junior season. We also see that Johnston likes to keep it. Right now he's reading the defense. This is Brown near the goal line, stacked up. ASU is saying, no, he did not get in. What an excellent tackle by Aaron Pope. The free safety coming down in the run game in the goal line situation, and he just wrapped up Brown and was able to yank him back. Brown, who you typically see fall forward with his strength, coming downhill. There goes Pope from the outside, makes the hit, and then pulls him and keeps him out of the end zone. Outstanding play by the junior from Cleveland, Ohio. Ball is about uh, on the half yard line. You would figure Brown again. Uh, Johnston on the keeper, he's in. Walks in, Tyler Johnston. Johnston last year. Now we'll take a look at the replay first. Just a straight run. Nice job by Brown leading the way with the block. Johnston follows in for the end zone and the first touchdown of the season for the UAB Blazers. Tyler Johnston was not the opening day starter for UAB last year. He took over late in the season and he would start five of the final six. He started all of the important games. Seven nothing, the Blazers over the Hornets. We'll be back in just a moment. on their first drive it goes eight plays 84 yards four minutes 14 seconds and very multiple on that drive you see Spencer Brown here with a big run that really took that drive off then they go option to the left side with Hayden using his speed to get to the outside then they go to the air the big post route down the scene gets the ball to Watkins and then Johnston finishes it off with a big run into the end zone. So Vogel will kick again. He opened up the game, and it was a touchback. And that one is boomed out of the end zone. You know, he's kicked off twice. We didn't even get the stat in. He's one of the all-time greats from last year in terms of not being able to return his kicks. Yeah, number two in the nation. So he did a great job of getting the ball for touchbacks. And what that does, it's such a big weapon. You don't think much about it. But if you have a team with a good kick returner, which 
Alabama State does, you're able to take that away by simply putting the ball in the end zone, not allowing them to get a big return, and not allowing any momentum. So that's a big weapon for UAB to have Vogel with the ability to get it into the end zone or get it high enough where you get a fair catch and a touchback. Just under 90% of his kicks last year were unreturnable. Big play by Alabama State on the first down. Larry Brown, the tight end. And that's one thing we heard from Alabama State coming into this ball game. Right before this game, two of their receivers who were expected to play, we found out were scratched. Uh, Jihad Booker, Miles Williams, both are out for this game. And because of that, you expect Brown, you expect Farmer, the tight ends, to be more involved in the offense here tonight. That was an eight-yard rush. This will be good for a first down and more. <laughs> On his way to the end zone and touchdown Alabama State. Deron Bell, 67 yards. Pure speed right there, just got into the secondary, took off, and that is a huge play for Alabama State. We've talked about this offense needing to get going, looking for a big play, get a little momentum in this ball game, and Bell delivered it right there. The transfer from South Florida with a big time run to put Alabama State on the scoreboard. Hunter Hansen will try for the extra point to tie this game up. Tied at seven, a mild surprise early here in the first quarter. Two plays, 75 yards at only 38 seconds. We'll get to see it again, Chad. Great blocking up front, and then the speed after the missed tackle, and nobody's going to catch Bell. He takes it to the house. We're tied up at seven here at Lincoln Field. We're tied at seven. Chad, good key block delivered by Juwan Kalanis. He did a great job of getting out front, getting downfield for the big block to Spring Bell. And big pressure on Calinus. He's replacing Titus Howard. The big right tackle was drafted in the first round by the Houston Texans. He had a good start there with a the big block as he was pulling around. And a big time play for Alabama State to get this game back even at 7-7. Seven seven. The UAB. Near side, ball is loose. I think the Hornets have it. Starling Thomas was on the return. How about Alabama State? Just a few minutes ago, you were talking about turnovers. You were talking about penalties. Can something big happen? Well, so far for Alabama State on back-to-back -back plays, big things have happened. First, they get the big touchdown run, and here we go on the kickoff return. Bam, big hit right there. Ball comes out, and Alabama State jumps on it. Now in great field position on the 16-yard line. So Alabama State doing exactly what they needed to do coming into this football game. Now let's see if Kadarius Davis could put more points on the board for the Hornets. Three wide receivers to the right for Davis. One setback. That is caught. Touchdown Hornets. And I love what Alabama State is doing right here. They're getting the ball out on the edge. Quick throws for Davis. Get it into the hands of your guys who can make plays. That time it was Tyreek Allen who came up with the catch. Just a quick out. Got the ball in the hands, and then he got to the pylon and got into the end zone. So Alabama State doing exactly what they need to do. Hanson for the extra point. No good. He hit the upright. 
but the Hornets have scored 13 points in 12 seconds. If you get a big turnover, you want to take advantage of it. They go with the quick out, they get the touchdown, it's 13-7. Extra point missed, the Hornets lead by six. Tyreek Allen on a touchdown catch. And I like the way that offensive coordinator Joe Blackwell went for the kill shot, Chad. Here's the first, we'll see the fumble. Started there, the big play on special teams, and then a quick out right there. Allen just outflanks the defender, gets to the end zone. Touchdown. Good blocking as well by Alabama State. And here come UAB, down by six, but a nice return in the making. Could go all the way, couple of moves. Myron Mitchell still on his feet, and he dives for the end zone. Touchdown. 99 yards for Mitchell. Huge play for UAB. We've been hearing all camp about Mitchell and the things that he's done and how much they were expecting from him coming into this season. And huge kick return. Puts the Blazers back even at 13. Big time run. Not only the speed that he showed, but then the awareness to cut all the way across the field and then dive and finish the play to get into the end zone. It wasn't a turnover. It wasn't a penalty by ASU, but they allowed a big play to get the crowd back into it and give the Blazers the momentum. And with the extra point, it will be UAB up by one. The two teams combined for 20 points in 30 seconds. As we said, college football is back. Special teams so important. Great job of blocking up front, and then Mitchell just uses his speed. Nice block with the kicker there. And then you just see the athleticism. A nice move, cuts all the way across the field. And then watch the way he finishes this play right here. Diving into the end zone with the flip, six points. Each team throwing haymakers at each other. And for those not familiar with these schools again, separated by 90 miles on Interstate 65, they often recruit the same player. A lot of familiarity. And a great opportunity, a lot of local guys in this game as well. Mitchell from just down the road in Jasper, Alabama. Look, Birmingham's a very rich football area. A number of great football programs, great players come out of there. And you're getting to see a lot of those athletes on display tonight. As we said, 20 points in just 30 seconds. This has been a fun one to watch. Here we are still just halfway through the first quarter. Dell and Gray back to receive. And Mr. Touchback does it again. Vogel. He's three for three. I'll we'll take a look at the series between these two teams. Chad, it's only two to one. It's like a baseball score. Last meeting back in 2008 when UAB won 45 to 10. Before that, they played in the mid-90s when UAB was an FCS school. And Alabama State won both of those meetings. We have something a little bit later on on the late Houston Markham, the former head coach at Alabama State. He's got both of those wins. Now for Alabama State coming back up. There's been a lot happening very quickly. You just take a deep breath and keep playing your game. They have done everything that they needed to do offensively early in this ball game. See an empty backfield, but before the snap, yeah, I'm thinking someone took a timeout. 30 second timeout taken by the Blazers. Wow, catch your breath, Chad. <laughs> Where's the oxygen? A lot of fun, and this is what college football is all about. And we're just into the season, very excited. That time, UAB comes out defensively. Coach Clark didn't like what he saw, so he called a timeout to get his guys together. Great crowd here tonight at Legion Field. 
this is what you expect. It's been a storyline for a while, but UAB obviously shut down their program in 2014. They came back in 2017. Last year, they won a conference championship, and they unveiled the banner here tonight for that conference championship, and they're looking to build. And that's what Coach Bill Clark has done since getting here at UAB. He's building a program, and they lost a lot of players, over 30 players from last season to this season. So it's, they're very interested in a lot of new guys to see how they perform. On the keeper, Davis. Chad, I want you to do me a favor. Explain to me the loss of 30 plus scholarship players. Yeah, for UAB to build this program up, they had to go get a lot of Juco guys. They had to get older guys, transfers that came in. And when that happens, a lot of guys cycled out. They knew that was coming. They had redshirted a number of guys. They, they've got some younger guys coming up. But the reality is last year, UAB had 20 starters coming back. This year, it's less than 10. And so it's a big difference from where they were last year beginning of the season and where they are now. There are a few guys on UAB that have to earn their scholarships. Deflected. <laughs> Davis got hit hard. He is now Jordan Smith coming off the edge with able to deflect that ball. Smith got the break, but then it was from the back side. Alex Wright came in and rolled up on Davis, and Davis is down. Alabama State's backup quarterback is Darrell Pearson. He was expected to get some action tonight, but certainly doesn't want to come in after an injury in the first quarter to the starter, Kadarius Davis. And Davis has played early in this game, Chad, with some energy some confidence and you're doing all the right things and boy that's a bad sign there you don't want to look at a knee opening game opening quarter he's been a leader on the field he's been accurate with the football he's done everything that you could hope now pearson's a guy who played in seven games last year he's not, they were expecting to play two quarterbacks regardless but you never want to see an injury to any player on the football field and as you said they're looking at that left knee he certainly got rolled up and so you just hope that it looks like they've moved down to the ankle now a little bit. So hopefully, as they work it out, hopefully it's nothing serious, but they're certainly looking at him as if it may be. The play was deflected and broken up early, so you're watching the football just dribble away, and then just right out of your screen, right out of your vision, was the hit on Davis, who is getting up. And walking out on his own, which is a good sign. We've got a replay. There's the deflection, and you see from the bottom, just gets rolled up. Nobody's fault at all. Alex Rice just playing hard, trying to get to the quarterback. And fortunately, it's good to see Davis walking off on his own accord. Doesn't seem to be bothered too much. I'm mean, trainers will go take a look on the sideline. But as we said, we'll expect now the backup to come in will be Daryl Pearson. Was a guy that has played in the past. Last year he was 50 of 106 through the air. He threw for 610 yards. He had two touchdown passes and five interceptions. Of the three quarterbacks deep on Alabama State's roster, this is the best runner of them all. So of course he starts with a pass and gets ASU close to a first down. But still the same approach, regardless of who's in there at quarterback. We're going to get. To get the ball out of the quarterback's hand very quickly, get it to the edge. One thing to remember, this UAB defense is fast. They can run sideline to sideline. Nice tackle there to make the stop by Starling Thomas, and that's going to force Alabama State to punt it away. Larry Brown, the tight end, has had a good first quarter. Byron Mitchell, team for the Blazers. So the Hornets will punt, and the guy who scored the kickoff return touchdown, Myron Mitchell, back to receive the punt. The punter is Anthony Craven, preseason all-conference. Out of bounds at about the 38, where UAB will go back on offense. That time, a lot of pressure on Craven. He, he didn't get it as good as he wanted to, and that's going to give UAB very good field position right at the 45 yard line. Well, we haven't seen 
Spencer Brown dominate yet. It's early. I would be a little mildly surprised, Chad, if UAB doesn't deflate the ball a little bit and just give Brown a couple of carries just to kind of quiet things down, slow them down. Brown gets it, I believe, right over midfield. The one thing about Brown coming into this season is he's finally healthy. He was able to recover. Uh, he had, I think really since he arrived on campus in 2017, he's been going through bumps and bruises and injuries and just things that were nagging and really kept him from being at 100%. They were very light on him during camp. They didn't push him as hard, uh, as many hits. And because of that, he says he's the freshest he's been throughout his entire career. Chad, how scary is that for Conference USA opponents that he's played basically injured for a couple of years and now he's pronounced himself fully healthy? Yeah, and big things. That's why so many big things are expected from him this year. He came into the season. He had the sixth most yard of all active players. Now, Arizona played last week, so that, that bumped him down to seven. But still, seventh most active yards. He's one of the elite running backs uh, in college football. 2,500 yards rushing in his first two years for Spencer Brown. This is a third down play coming up. Who jumped? UAB's pointing towards Alabama State. It looked like the Hornets jumped, but were they drawn? They certainly jumped first. All side, all side, defense, 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 the five yard penalty results in the first down. That's something you like to see in the development of a quarterback for Johnston. Coming into his sophomore year, you just use the hard count. You see it there, he got two guys to jump, and you get the first down the easy way, you keep the drive alive. So a nice decision there by Johnston to go with the hard count. That gives UAB the first down at the 45-yard line. Johnston is a red shirt sophomore. Remember, he was the starter down the stretch last year through the hands of Mitchell. Well, oh, Mitchell had a lot of room. With Johnson is the deep ball and how well he throws it. That ball was perfect. I think Mitchell's going to, that's what he's going to be thinking about tonight uh, because this is a beautiful ball. It's a simply a nine route, a go route. Johnson, a little half roll. He lets it fly. And you see it right there. Could not be thrown any better. Mitchell just let it go right through his hands. David Crane, the radio announcer for UAB, told us in the pregame, he said Johnston throws a beautiful deep ball. And David was spot on with that call. Fake to Brown. UAB goes underneath, and then there's a flag coming out of the secondary. They may get a legal man downfield. 12-yard gain if it holds. now talking it over Rodney make Burnett sure on the same page Rodney Burnett the head ref pass interference offense number 20 15 yards from the previous spot remain second down that's why Bill Clark took his hat off so they're gonna get Garrett Prince the tight end with pass interference which typically means you're blocking maybe the catch will say what to see replay if not coach Clark certainly does not like that call and is protesting along the sideline but a huge play there where UB would have picked up the first down now they're all the way back to the 40 yard line here in this first quarter Alabama State getting the kind of breaks necessary to pull off the upset Oh, there it is right there. Good call. Good call by the officials. Contact there by Prince down the field. Looked like before the ball was let go. And that's where the penalty comes in. Great shot by the camera guys. Well, that's why they make all the big bucks. Those camera guys.
Three wide receivers near side. And Johnston right down the middle with a wobbly pass. Incomplete. Nice set of downs defensively by Alabama State. Yeah, really well defended that time. They had well covered that time. They had a defender running underneath man to man. Then they had a safety over the top. So even if that ball had been close, they had guys in place to make a play. So a good series there, obviously aided by the, the penalty. The offensive pass interference, and as a result, UAB will put the ball away. Blazers will punt. And Joshua Hill, he had signaled for a fair catch, but that ball's out of bounds way before it gets to Brown. About the 22-yard line, let's see who comes out to quarterback for the Hornets. Hit to the lower leg area. Daryl Pearson came on in relief. 36 yards on the punt. Kyle Greenwell, the blazer punter. So back to Davis, which is a good sign. And that's important, too. Look, this is the first year for Alabama State offensive coordinator Joe Blackwell. He's obviously decided on Davis as his guy. Come out, he's played pretty well. You want to see your quarterback be able to stay in the football game. So good to see Davis back out and healthy. Hornets on the ground. Big chunk of yardage there. As we're the ball carrier. Ezra Gray, 13 yards and a first down. That's a nice run this time by Gray. Nothing up the middle. He breaks to the outside. That's a nice job of getting forward out to the 35. That's a rebuilt UAB defense. Last year, one of the top 10 defenses in the nation. They pitched three shutouts. But Alabama State has been able to move the ball as they go outside and complete again to Gray. Eight yards on the game. And you see the continued approach through sideline to sideline for Alabama State that time on the swing pass. We got a player down for UAB. Quick tempo, both teams. A lot of action. Still got three and a half minutes to go here in the first quarter. Chad, let's get back to Joe Blackwell for a moment. I want you to take me inside how a decision is made on the starting quarterback. Blackwell's the OC. Hill Ely is the head coach. How does it all come about? Yeah, I think you're, it's constant communication, especially with a first-year offensive coordinator. He's going to watch tape, I would imagine, but ultimately you let your eyes be the judge and you let the guys compete and you let them come out. That's one thing. Alabama State had five quarterbacks in camp this fall. They had five guys with the opportunity to come in, compete, uh, and have an opportunity to earn play time. We thought we might see all three of them tonight. We saw Pearson already. We've got Jet Even, a transfer from Mississippi Valley State. could potentially see him as well. And all three of these quarterbacks who are potentially would play have different skill sets and so I think you let your eyes be the judge and you let them battle it out and let somebody win win the competition that's the nose guard Tony Fair 6'3 335 junior John Tavius Johnson is the backup nose guard We have to be impressed by the way Alabama State has moved the football here in the first quarter. They trailed by one. Nice tackling that time by UAB. The handoff was to Bell. Got only one yard. Third down and one for the Hornets. They try to keep possession. I don't think he got there. That was a nice tackle as well. Garrett Marino, you said we call his name a lot. Look at that. And 
throws for the pictures. Coming off the edge from the back side of the play. They use slow to try to take everything away. And then Davis tries to take it up the middle, but Marino read that play perfectly, came downhill, made the tackle. And after Alabama State had a very second and short, they're now in a fourth and two. It'll be decision time for Coach Hill Ely, I would imagine, this early in the ball game, he would want to punt it away. We'll wait and see. Injured Hornet on the field. We go back to again by early statements, penalties, and turnovers. I think if you give UAB momentum, if you don't go, if you don't get the first down, that's going to give UAB momentum. I think the safest route is to punt. And remember, as I said early, Chad, three and out is not the worst thing in the world when you're the underdog and you're only down by one. Yeah, look, for any time you're coming into a new football season, you got a quarterback who's adjusting and getting settled in. You want to take care of the football. You want to make sure you don't make a mistake that puts your team in a bad position. So that's really the approach. Look, you'd love to make plays. Absolutely the case. But even more importantly, protect the football, uh, keep, the, keep the game going back and forth and give yourself a chance. Total yards right now in this first quarter, Alabama State 128, UAB just over 100. Long touchdowns for both teams. A run for the Hornets and a kickoff return for the Blazers. We didn't get a chance to see the number of that injured Hornet. Also see some of the UAB medical staff helping out. Look, you hate to see that happen anytime. And it's so tough, but especially when you've worked all summer, you've gotten ready, and you're ready for the season, you're so excited, and then here you are in the first quarter of the first game, you go down with an injury. We'll take a timeout from Legion Field, the Blazers by one. Hornet was backup quarterback Daryl Pearson. We're trying to find out where he was on that play. He certainly was not the quarterback, and there is a shot of Pearson being helped off the field. You see him, he's there in the air cast, so clearly a pretty significant leg injury for Pearson uh, three, 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 four, down and two. as he walks off and heads into the locker room. Alabama State decides to punt. Or do they? It's a fake, and it'll be close. We talked previously on a fourth and short. Do you go for it or do you punt? Alabama State lines up to punt, but they try to go with the fake and just UAB shut it down from the get-go. Nothing doing there. The direct snap to the up back. And a great job of recognition by UAB. No chance whatsoever. And that goes down. And the gamble is if you go to try to fake the punt, if it works, it's great. If not, it gives UAB excellent field position to start this drive. Johnston wants the kill shot under some duress. Oh, he threw it right into the Alabama State defense. That'll be a pick six with a flag down. We'll see where this one is going. Keating Isaac, but will it stand? I think you're going to get rough in the passer against Johnston there. You're also probably going to get taunting on the end of that play as well. A terrible throw there by Johnston. Just threw it right to Thompson. But we'll sit here and let the officials talk through 
So there's going to be a lot to explain here on this play on what could be a huge momentum shifting play again here in this football game. You think when you say taunting that Isaac was kind of skip roping into the end zone? Is that what uh, you're Correct. referring to? Big decision coming up, and you're right. Momentum is on the line under two minutes remaining in this first quarter. It's either a pick six or UAB will maintain possession. The officials doing the right thing. It's taking a while, but they're having to write down where did it happen, where's the yardage, making sure they have it all right, and then you're going to see the enforcement is going to play a big shift. There are three fouls on the play. Holden, defense number 11. The penalty is declined. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 10. Number 10. Number 10's first unsportsmanlike conduct of the game. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Deep number 46, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So I saw two of the three, uh, and the officials got this one right. They got the roughing the pass against Johnson. That's what negates, obviously, the interception. There was also a defensive holding down the field on one of the receivers. That penalty was declined, and then there was the unsportsmanlike at the end of the play. But see here, you see it both. The ball thrown right to Isaac, and you see the hit there on the quarterback to Johnston, which is what negates the interception. So a lot happening in that play, a lot happening in this ball game. And we've had a number of big plays, a number of between fake punts, big penalties, a lot happening early in this ball game. But after all of that, UAB's got a first down at the 27-yard line. Off the right end of the line for the UAB Blazers. Three yard game. Jonathan Hayden. So again, Bill Clark and his OC, Bryant Vincent. Little change of pace as they keep Spencer Brown on the bench. Run pass option right here. Here comes the pitch. No. Kept it. That's an RPO. Tyler Johnston ran it well. Picked up 10. Nice job that time by Johnston. One on the option play, keeping it. Look, what you want to see defensively is you got to take out the first runner. That's a nice job of blocking on the edge by Hayden Pittman. That allows Johnston to get around. Gets all the way inside the 15-yard line. Under a minute remaining, Blazers, first down and 10. Inside the 15. Hayden stays in, by the way, no Brown, and that is Hayden. It's close to the 10. Jonathan Hayden you talk about Hayden LA. being a change up back. Look at the difference Hayden between three. Spencer Brown and Jonathan and Hayden. Seven. Hayden, who had that carry there, five foot seven, 175 pounds. Spencer Brown, six foot. 230 pounds, so completely different build from those guys, and it's a, they are really good complement to each other. Second down for the Blazers. After that big roughing, the quarterback penalty that changed the momentum of this drive. Would have been a pick six for the Hornets. Now inside the 10. Hayden again. Hayden is out of Washington, D.C. Five foot seven, as Chad mentioned. And that will end the first quarter. This was busy, and it was exciting. And it's the way college football is here in the Deep South. After one, the Blazers 14, the Hornets 13.
Back at Legion Field, a one-point game after one quarter. And you're looking at Alabama State, 5-1 shy of 500 all-time. 495 coming in. And about 20-plus games over 500 for this program. UAB knocking on the door. Now they go to Brown. Brown trying to gain the edge, and what a nice tackle from behind. Gobbled up by Devon Booker. It looked for just a second like Spencer Brown was going to be able to get to the outside, but a great play by Booker to chase that play down and come up with a the tackle. There aren't a whole lot of people that could say that they got Brown in an open field. Look at this. No, and it was just from the get-go. Booker read that play perfectly, came from the backside and chased it down. Excellent defensive play. This is a fourth and one, and the Blazers are going to go for it. Brown right on the pocket of Johnston. Johnson himself with the keeper. And that is going to be close as well. Alabama State coming off the field. They only needed one. My stats guy, Jeff Spradlin, said they got one, which they would be a football. first down. We'll have to see the replay and see what happened there at the end. Johnston rolling to the outside. Big hit there. And the ball comes out. Ball comes out. Great defensive play by Alabama State coming from the outside as Irshad Davis, he came up with the hit, the ball came out, and Alabama State recovers. Another big turnover here in this ball game. Alabama State, bottom line, they have made plays. Forget the names, the numbers, the programs, the conferences. That was a fourth and one that they did not convert. And now Alabama State will convert on a first down pass. Got to be impressed by the Alabama State Hornets so far. Second quarter, they're within range, obviously. One uh, Down by one point. And again, Davis has done a nice job keeping the ball moving. Ezra Gray with a short carry. We mentioned that Alabama State, 500 wins. They're nearing that mark. You know, it's a program that has produced some NFLers. And the latest one, Chad, you talked about it earlier, Titus Howard, a number one draft choice, an offensive lineman by the Houston Texans. Yeah, a young man that played quarterback in high school. He came to Alabama State as a tight end. They recognized his ability, put him at tackle, and now he's a first-round draft pick in the NFL. And also, there's a sack by UAB. If you play fantasy football, one of the darlings of fantasy football, Isaiah Crowell, ran ran here for Alabama State. Let's take a look at that defense by UAB. UAB bringing pressure from the backside. C.D. Daniels there to finish the play up. Great pressure in front by Jordan Smith getting into the backfield. Alabama State trying to get to the edge. Smith doing a great job of getting upfield, cutting it off. And that's a big play defensively by UAB. Third down at 12. It's really one of the first big plays that this defense has made. Again, a defense that was top 10 in the nation last year. They threw three shutouts. 30 seconds. And it was really the heart and soul, the backbone of UAB's Conference USA Championship team was their defense. And they have been a torch, but they've given up a lot of yards, 13 points. And more importantly, Kadarius Davis continues to be able to move the football. Take a look at that list there, Chad. There's the draft picks you talked about obviously to have a first rounder that's a big deal for any program much less at the FCS level uh, so Titus going 23rd overall to the Houston Texans but you see other names uh, where Co. Tavares Jackson who many people remember the quarterback Reggie Barlow, Eddie Robinson, Curtis Green, Lester Sims going back to 1972 so there is pedigree of guys moving on from this Alabama State program and playing at the next level. Well, I talked with the Alabama State people prior to this game and they said with Howard going in the first round, it just put their program on another level. And they also said he deserved it. He was an incredible four-year performer for Alabama State.
Alabama State spreading out their offense. That's going to be a loss of yards. A little pass out in the flat didn't go anywhere. Trying to get Gray in the open field out on the edge. That ball just thrown a little bit too short. Gray came back and made the catch. It ultimately results in a loss of about one yard. That's going to put him in a fourth and long situation and force him to punt it away. And UAB is going to wind up, obviously, with very good field position. One thing we have talked about tonight is Anthony Craven, the punter for Alabama State. Averaged 42.8 yards per game last year. That was 18th in the country in FCS. He's a guy that's really gotten a lot of attention coming into this season, preseason all-conference on a number of watch lists, expecting big things. Here's where he needs a big-time punt as Alabama stays backed up. Myron Mitchell licking his chops. He's going to be inside the 45 of Alabama State. Mitchell has already, if you just tuned his Mitchell on a line drive, and then he gets it inside the 25. We'll go to break. UAB leading Alabama State by one. Pick. Just grab a Coke, scan the cup in the McDonald's app, and you're entered for a chance to win cash prizes and football gear. At Legion's Field, downtown Birmingham, we call it the Magic City. The defending Conference USA champions up by just one. Good position, however, for UAB and their quarterback, Tyler Johnston. Redshirt sophomore is going to put it in the air. And off the hands of the intended receiver, Myron Mitchell. UAB several times tonight have put Mitchell in one-on-one -on -one situations with man-to-man -man coverage, try to get him down the field. That was a really good throw by Johnston. A little bit to the outside, but he put it where only his guy could catch the ball. Now Mitchell we, just not able to, unable to bring it in. Day after day, press release after press release, Myron Mitchell's name was coming up as having a great camp. So no surprise that he's been active. That might have been deflected, and the Blazers are going to lose a lot of yards. Darren Johnson on the tackle. And Johnson, the preseason all-swack performer, he read that perfectly. Got around the block, got into the backfield on that screen play, made the tackle. Johnson, probably the best defender on this Alabama State team, did a great job of reading that play. He had 78 tackles last year and got one there. Chad, he was part of the Read Across America program, wasn't he? Had a video that went viral, over 3.5 million views as part of that. Well, that's close to uh, what I usually get on my videos. Almost intercepted. I'm at 3.5 viewers, so there's a little bit of a difference. He's at 3.5 mil. I'm at about 3.5, and, and I think my wife and kids, so... A little bit of a difference in social media following. We talked previously about the great throw by Johnston where he put it to the outside where only his guy could get it. He did not do that on that play. That time Mitchell was to the outside. That ball was thrown to the inside. And that allowed the Hornet defender to get there and deflect the ball. This would be for, from about 46 for Nick Vogel. That's within his range, and he'll get it. And that will increase UAB's lead to four. We'll take a break from downtown Birmingham at historic Legion Field, UAB over Alabama State when we come back. back, bring them back. You're looking at Vulcan, the statue of Vulcan, and he represents the city, the iron, city of Birmingham and the tradition of iron and coal which is how this city was built and you often hear me say 
the magic city of Birmingham, Alabama. I say that all the time. And people ask, where did that come from? Well, Chad, the growth of this city in the 30s and 40s skyrocketed on the backs of iron and steel and coal. And it grew so fast, it was like magic, and thus the nickname, the Magic City. Birmingham is also referred to from time to time as the Pittsburgh of the South because, again, the same type of industry and mindset of what was built in Pittsburgh was built here in Birmingham. And that's under the Department of For Those Who Wanted to Know. Well, and interesting, really, UAB's become what Birmingham is now and the developments of what the university is doing and medical-wise. So it's been really uh, incredible the big impact that this university has had really on the economy of not only Birmingham but the state as a whole. Well, that's a good point. And UAB has gone all in. Everything, they put all the chips in on their athletics and especially their football program. Millions and millions of dollars building the practice facility, the pavilion right off of campus. A beautiful, beautiful state-of-the-art facility. And again, rewarding Bill Clark for the success that he has had a program that disappeared for a couple of years, resurrected the program, and uh, last year Conference USA champs along with a bowl win as well. Larry Brown has had a nice first half. That's Brown's fourth catch of the ball game. They've done a good job of getting him the ball and getting him on the edge, allowing him to run free to pick up some extra yards. And we've talked about it all night offensively. And you see there head coach Bill Clark, 25 and 14 in his fourth season at UAB. In 2018, he was the Eddie Robinson National Coach of the Year. On the other side for Alabama State, the offensive staff has put their players in a good spot to make plays. Here's a big third down. Well, regardless of how this quarter ends, you still got plenty of time. Look, Alabama State is clearly in this game. They have clearly played well both sides of the ball. They've got a big home run play that they've made. They've got a couple of good defensive plays against UAB's offense. Right, this has got to be a very encouraging game as they will get ready in a couple of weeks to open up the SWAC conference. Yeah, UAB calling a timeout there. They want to make sure they have their defense in place for this third down play. And one thing UAB's done, we talked about the academic pedigree and what's done on that campus. Look here as it goes into the football program as well. UAB has 16 players on its team that have already graduated from college. That's incredible. The guys put in the work. They're here in the summers. They get in the extra work. Uh, and they, they earn their degree, which is the whole point of why you're here. Uh, so kudos to those young men on this team. For Alabama State here, last season, they were only 28% on third down. It was 114th in the country. Tonight, 0 for 3. They've got to convert on third down, not only in this ball game, but throughout this football season. And this is third and relatively short. It'll be three and already a flag. What do you got, Chad? A pre-snap flag as well. Yeah, it's going to be false start. Five-yard penalty remains third down. And that's the kind of things. When you struggle on third down already, you can't afford those kind of mistakes. A third and three and a third and eight, it's obvious, but that is a huge difference. And you're putting yourself, it completely changes the play call. It changes your approach. And you see right there, just let that right foot come back a little bit early. That cost them five yards, and now a tougher challenge to convert this third down. We'll see if Alabama State plays it safe, or do they go for the first down, try to move the chains? That's great in motion. Nowhere to go. Swallowed up and intercepted by the Blazers. That is going to be a pick six. Devodrick Bynum. Now we got a flag on the play. One was thrown back in the secondary. Another flag was thrown after the interception. It's going to be a basically a targeting type call, uh, an illegal block. But we'll have to see the play in the secondary. There are two fouls on the play. Pass interference, defense number 20. Penalties decline. Unsportsmanlike conduct, defense, number one. That's his first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. Penalty, automatic first down. 
So you see here Davis, he faces pressure, makes a poor decision, tries to force the ball as he's getting hit. There's the interception going to the house. Big hit there. And you see Marino, easy call for the officials there on the taunting. You can't do that. Marino gets in the face of Davis. But nonetheless, that pick six would have been negated due to the pass interference call, which was hard to see there on the replay. So another big break for Alabama State. What could have been a devastating play and extended the UAB lead. Instead, two penalties on that play against UAB, and Alabama State's back in business first and ten. Speaking of getting in the face, I wonder if David Reeves or Bill Clark will get in the face of Garrett uh, Marino because that really was uncalled for, that taunting penalty. Make a play and pretend that you've been there and, and done it before, which he has done. Well, I can see on the sidelines there are some pretty serious discussions going on. Marino is on the sideline currently. Alabama State minus one on that last play. We've actually had two taunting penalties. A lot of things have you said, Chad. I mean, we got if we had a checklist of what has gone on, columns are filling up in a hurry. That's Brown, the tight end. Now his size, Chad, makes him an easy target, 6'4", 260 and he cannot be covered by a corner or a linebacker. No, he runs pretty well. And that was a good job that time by Turner and Bowler, both coming from the safety spots, getting downhill and making the tackle. There you see Marino is back in the ball game after coming out for a few plays. Larry Brown is a senior from Atlanta, Georgia. He's played in 20 games in his Alabama State career. Interesting, Chad, especially with the skill set we've seen. He has never scored a touchdown. Will that end tonight? That's lifted out of bounds. Uh, kind of a smart throw there by Davis, so he doesn't turn it over. That's the kind of decision you see as a quarterback develops. The previous play on the pick six that was called back, he had two guys coming into his face, and he tried to force it, tried to make something happen, and that resulted in the interception that was ultimately negated. That time, look, you want to make something happen on third down, but it's more important to not make a mistake. Davis makes the wise decision. He throws it away, and he allows his punter to come on and kick it away. Myron Mitchell again will be back for the Blazers. Anthony Craven will boot it away. And Mitchell's going to get out of the way, and that's going to be inside the five. Nice punt by Craven. Now, apparently, it was a touchback. I beg your pardon. It, it got past the five and into the end zone. A 57-yard boot for Craven. And that's one you want to see when you see the rugby style punt. You get a little bit of a roll, and then you want to see some height. And if you do that, you're perfectly executing. That was almost an excellent kick by Craven there just at the last minute. It got just inside the pylon for the touchback. So UAB is going to take over at the 20 yard line. Yeah, big difference between inside the five and now breathing space at the 20. One would have to say a relatively quiet game for Spencer Brown. Man in motion, and here is downtown Spencer Brown. And one thing you notice in this game, too, is the, is the fact he gains five there. He's had a number of plays where he's gained five, he's gained six, but they've mixed it up with Hayden. They, look, this is game one. You're not going to run him over and over and over. You want to make sure he's fresh. We talked about the way that he's been really playing injured the last two seasons. You want him to be a focal point of the offense, and he will be, but this is game one, so you want to slowly work him into those reps. He's from Kimberly, Alabama. Gets the pitch. See if he can get the outside edge. He cannot. It's hard for us to believe, but he was in the same backfield with Devlin Hodges, who's now fighting for a quarterback job with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Hodges, the quarterback, Brown, the running back. I don't think they lost the game. <laughs> Yeah, Hodges had an incredible career at Sanford University just right down the road over the mountain in Homewood. 
who's the Walter Payton FCS Player of the Year. And obviously with what Brown is doing here at UAB, that's a pretty prolific combination that played together in high school. Third down, four. That is loose, and it looks like Alabama State. They got it, the Hornets. Andrew Ogletree is there to jump on it. As UAB was trying the speed sweep. And we'll see with that up ball drop forward. If it was thrown forward, it should be an incomplete pass. Yeah, that's an incomplete pass. Looked like that ball was tossed forward. And that's what the UAB coaches are arguing here. Defense is under review. So they're going to go review that play, and I would imagine they're going to overturn that call. You did see a little bit of an angle. It's almost like he's tossed it a little bit to the side, but I believe that ball was thrown forward. That's why you designed the play that way. UAB's Kendall Parham takes that pitch. You, you're going with forward pass? Look, he was in front. Uh, that said, oh. it landed backwards, so, but it looked like the contact and then it popped backwards, so we'll have to wait and see as they go under, uh, well, under review here. You know, we say, Chad, get it right, and that's what they're trying to do right now. These guys are trying to get this right, another critical play here in the first half. Hey, the momentum swings in this first game of the season have been unreal. Rodney Burnett is our referee who you saw a little bit earlier on the sideline. The replay communicator is Todd Rath. Replay from the conference is Paul Jones. So they're now reviewing the play to determine whether it was a forward incomplete pass or a fumble. Obviously, big implications based on that uh, determination. We're here with six minutes, 19 seconds left before the half. And it's a difference in Alabama State potentially having the ball inside the 20 going in. If I'm allowed to guess, and that's debatable, it looks like a fumble to the eye. To the eye and the optics, it looks like a fumble. But if it was that simple, they would have just given the ball to UAB. Here we go again. Review, the quarterback's arm was going for it. Therefore, it's an incomplete pass in fourth down. It was not the best executed play, obviously, because of the fumble. It was, they were too tight together. You like to see a little more separation there. The ball is tossed forward more cleanly. And then if it falls down, it's clearly incomplete. That was probably a little bit too close for comfort for UAB. But nonetheless, after the replay, it is determined to be an incomplete pass. And that will allow UAB to punt it away here on fourth down. Kyle Greenwell is the Blazer punter. Joshua Hill, the return man. Greenwell kicks it high. And then Hill, right at around the 20. Makes his way north, and he puts the ball on the ground at Legion Field. And that is a scrum and a fight for that football on another Big momentum, potential momentum swinging play. UAB is saying that they've got it, plus there's a flag. The Blazers will get possession. There's also a flag, Chad. That's likely going to be an illegal block against Alabama State, so that'll be declined. Huge turnover there. During the return, illegal block in the back by the receiver team, number 17. The penalties declined. Result of the play is first down for UAB. That was a really interesting punt return there because of the hesitation. Hill hesitates a little bit, does a great job of getting north and south, picking up some nice yardage, but then a great job of getting your hand on the football. That's Larry Wooden for UAB that comes up with the strip. The Blazers recover and have great field position. Typically in this situation, a team likes to go right for the end zone after a big turnover. Johnston's got a couple of receivers to his left. Hayden on the handoff. 
No, it's Johnston by himself. Johnston on the keeper. That was an excellent fake. 16 yards for Tyler Johnston. Faked me out of my cleats, and I'm not wearing cleats. Joshua Knight was in place to make the play. Excuse me, Thomas was in place to make the play, but a great move that time by Johnston to get around and a big gainer there on first down. That's Hayden in the backfield. Fake and a keeper. And this time they sniff it out if you're Alabama State. Wasn't disguised as well as the previous one. I've been impressed, though, with Johnson, the way that he's really managed this football game. We've talked about how well he's thrown the deep ball. Uh, he's made some really nice decisions and nice runs in the run game. Picked up some nice yards. That previous play, obviously, an example. This is a guy who's a winner. He was 4-1 and one last year as a starter uh, for UAB. And in his high school career, he was 35-0. and 0. He won the state championship at Spanish Fort down on the Alabama coast in 2013 and 15. He was injured in 14, but 35-0 and 0 as a starter. And he will go to the air looking for his man. Caught! Touchdown! UAB! Kendall Parham! that time by Johnston just as we were talking about the things that he's done Alabama State loves to play man to man in the secondary tight coverage but just a well thrown ball into the end zone for the touchdown Vogel for the PAT we'll take a look at that touchdown Quick fake looking down the field, no doubt to where he was going. Gets in the end zone to par him. Great use of his hands. Touchdown, UAB. So all hail the queen of spice. Hail the queen. That's right. And get a free six piece when you mobile order through the app. Bring them back. Let's take a look at that last drive. Three plays, 40 yards, 121. And it was a, uh, a Tyler Johnston 23-yard touchdown pass to Kendall Parham. And just a beautiful ball, well thrown. Great job by Parham. Not only beating the defender, but looking back, finding the football. Excellent throw and catch that time. And we've seen big plays all night. That's just another one to add to the list. Beautiful throw, as you mentioned, by Tyler Johnston. Another unreturnable by Nick Vogel. So Alabama State will go on offense under five minutes remaining here in the second quarter. My partner, Chad Pilcher, already dreaming about, is it a cookie or a cupcake uh, for halftime? <laughs> <laughs> That's why we got Jeff here. Hey, by the way, thanks to all of our family and friends and all the hardworking people behind the scenes at DIFP and uh, their staff, along with UAB and Alabama State, while well, we get a moment for providing us with all this excellent information. Good camera work tonight. And for Alabama State, you would love to go down the field and get some points. But more importantly, with just a little over four minutes left, you don't want to make a mistake and give UAB another opportunity. Well, they will try for some points. Defended well by the Blazers. Dijon Turner, one of the defenders. And I like the aggression on first down. You're still in a pretty decent spot here in this ball game. You've gotten turnovers. You've made some plays. So you want to go and try to get points. Now the flip side is the clock stops on that incompletion. And so you want to, if you give UAB enough time, they really seem to be clicking offensively and they may have an opportunity to come back down the field and score again before the half as well. Fake to Gray. 
short pass and then run out of bounds. That's Duran Bell who had that long run earlier. Bam. That's Marino again. And he and Davis have had a number of interactions throughout this football game. That one was close. It looked shoulder to shoulder, Chad. Right. I'm talking more was it on time, and I think right, obviously right. No. no flag comes uh -huh. out, but a big hit there. Davis has taken some licks. Had the leg he hurt a little bit earlier. He's able to come back in, fortunately. He's taken licks throughout the night. And that was another one. Third down play now for the Hornets. Play a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. conservative play call here by Alabama State as they're looking at third and 14. At their own 20 yard line, Alabama State. Pass is complete. UAB really starting to pick up the tempo and the pursuit defensively. You're starting to see a lot of gold helmets, green jerseys, really flying to the football, seeing some big hits to finish those plays. Tyreek Allen limping off the sidelines. And there is Mitchell ready to receive. Once again, UAB, as you mentioned, Chad, they're going to wind up with pretty good position depending on this Mitchell return. And so with three and a half minutes to go and UAB's offense starting to click, they might be able to put some more points on the scoreboard. And that's a nice kick that backs Mitchell up inside the 20. And he jumps out of bounds at the sidelines and they'll mark it around the 27. A little over three minutes remaining. We're in the half. 51 yard punt, seven on the return. You know, Anthony Craven, the punter we talked about, and you mentioned preseason all-conference. He's up for the Ray Guy Award. They have the Ray Guy now in the FCS, the award for the out most outstanding punter at FCS level. And, and we've seen him. He had one that went off the side of his foot, but he's had a couple of excellent kicks. That's one right there. The height and the distance that he's getting almost pinned one down inside the five-yard line. We heard a lot about him coming in, and he's delivered this evening. Brown swallowed up by the interior. Randall Smith that time, the D lineman, just gets straight across the face of the UAB offensive line and stops that play before it's able to get going. Nice play. Loss of a couple of yards for UAB. Clock ticking under three. Johnston going long ball. There's some contact. Will there be a flag? And the answer is no. Intended for par, uh, no, intended rather for Austin Watkins, who has a touchdown. Man to man coverage on the outside. That's what you want to see. Take the deep ball and take a shot. Joshua Hill was there in coverage that time, did an excellent job just running with the receiver. There was some contact, but no flag came out. That forces UAB into a third and 13. Three far side receivers, one on the near side for Tyler Johnston. And Johnston calls his own number. Knocked out of bounds. 33, 34 yard line. Quarterback draw here. Johnson. Gets there a was nice some room, Chad. Room to the outside. 
but a few yards short. That's a good play call by UAB. Look, you have a comfortable lead. You're up 11 on what's been a back-and-forth football game. You'd love to extend the play. You'd love to go get more points, but more importantly, you're comfortable with your lead. You let the clock run down. You punt it back, and then you believe your defense can hold off and get into the half with a nice, nice lead. Greenwell. And now Hill calls for a fair catch. And he had a little contact, but there won't be a flag there. Joshua Hill calling for the fair catch. One more time for Alabama State on offense under the leadership of Kadarius Davis. We've talked about playing in-state games and what it's like to have these universities play together. Another connection between these two universities is on the coaching staff. Travis Pearson, the defensive coordinator for Alabama State. He was previously the defensive coordinator at South Alabama. He followed Bill Clark. Bill Clark left South Al defensive coordinator to go to Jacksonville State as the head coach before coming to UAB. Pearson followed him. Also, ASU D-line coach Anthony Taylor played at South Alabama for Coach Clark. So a number of connections there uh, between these two coaching staffs, which is, I think, a thing that makes these intrastate games even more interesting. And we read about other schools in the oh, southeast. Crazy. Someone was telling me about it's Louisiana. 30 seconds. And you said LSU is going to now take on a lot yeah. of interstate rivals. LSU plays. Look, you've got to play these non-conference games. Why not play a team that's inside your state? You keep that revenue with inside. Another thing, Coach Clark's wife, when he was at Prattville, she actually got her master's degree in education at Alabama State. So a number of connections, which is interesting to see, not to mention the fact that you have a lot of players from the state of Alabama that play on both of these squads. These are guys that grew up playing with and against each other, and now here they are playing at the collegiate level against each other, which I think is something that's pretty cool that you get to do. Guys you grew up with, I had that happen a couple of times, where guys you played with and against in high school, and then you're playing against them in college. That's a fun thing to do. Well, Alabama State last year, 4-7, and 2-4 and four in the SWAC. If they put forth this effort and this energy, they will be improving, and they will win more games than they did last year. Right over the middle, incomplete. You know, every once in a while, Chad, and I, I've learned this more from basketball, but if your roster is filled up and you see a kid, you know, depending on your connections, you might make a phone call to a state coach and say, hey, I don't have room for this guy, but perhaps you do. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some crossover somewhere along the line. Bill Clark gives a phone call and says, look, we're, we've got three fill-in-the-blank positions already filled up. And I wonder if you can use this guy. Again, Alabama State has a lot of transfers from uh, both Troy and South Florida. That's Ja'Cory Merritt on the carry. Under two minutes remaining. Alabama State's going to call a timeout. Timeout. Alabama State, they're second, 30 seconds. We've seen some good things in this ball game tonight. We've also seen some things you would typically think of in a first football game. We've seen the turnovers. We've seen a couple of penalties that weren't real timely. And a lot of times what I like to see is the rhythm. And what kind of rhythm do you see? Heck, when we're doing a broadcast, what kind of rhythm is going to come out when you're doing the first broadcast of the season? And I think you've seen that. That timeout there is the perfect example. Alabama State, you've worked the two-minute drill in practice. You've tried to go fast. But when you get into the actual game situation, a lot of times it just doesn't flow as well as you would like. I think the Alabama State coaching staff, since that, they called the timeout to talk it over. The word would that we're looking for again is tempo. When you control tempo, you win games. Doesn't matter what sport it is. And even more so here on this third and three because obviously if you don't get it, then you've got to punt it back to UAB. And Davis tackled from behind. There'll be no first down. That's Jerrion Street with a nice tackle. They call him the star. That's his position. Chad, I need for you to do me a favor. Explain that star position to me. 
Yeah, it's really a, a nickelback kind of strong safety type position. Um, you're in the secondary, but it's, it has a linebacker look as well. And Street's a guy that's had an interesting story. He started his career, he's from nearby Trustful High School, went to Hewitt Trustful, uh, just north of Birmingham. He committed and went to Ole Miss as a running back. He then transferred back to UAB. Uh, as a running back. He had actually had 275 yards rushing last year, but because of the need on defense for UAB, they lost a number of players. Seconds. He's moved in, uh, into this star position, and it's six foot two, 210 pounds. He's a guy that's a, got a good build. He can play it, and you saw there, he obviously, as a former running back, has the speed as he chased that one down by the backside. I was reading about that position, and that's a, a, a very valuable position increasing depending on what the defense gives you. But of all things, Alabama and Nick Saban trying to focus and find a replacement. Their star moved up into the NFL. And like you said, it's a hybrid guy. Got to be very athletic. That is the first requirement. So another punt for the Hornets. Get that rugby style kick again. Mitchell backing away. That ball will roll to the 21. Well, less than, well, now 32 seconds. I was about to say less than 30. Clock did stop. 32, probably conservative. I don't think you're going to go downfield right now. UAB has the lead. Yeah, UAB was fairly conservative on their previous drive when there were around three minutes left in the half, so I would imagine you're going to see more of the same here. From Coach Clark's perspective, you're comfortable with where you are. Now, that said, he may just turn it loose right here and let it fly down the field. That's one thing you could do. You could go, if you throw the go route, if you can, you feel comfortable that you can protect, maybe you get your one-on-one -on -one covers. But as you see in the secondary for Alabama State, they've got six defensive backs, and they're all playing about eight or nine yards off to prevent any type of deep, big play. Run play by the Blazers. Good chunk, but again, they were playing for the pass, so you kind of expected that to happen. And they give it to the speed guy, Hayden. And one of the few times you'll see UAB go under center as they clock the ball. So we talked about Alabama, Alabama State was playing a dime package. Defensive backs playing way off. Because of that, you run the ball. So UAB picks up about 12 yards on that first down. They come up, they stop the clock. And now maybe you will take a shot down the field. You're looking, can I get a shot and get into a field goal position? No timeouts left for UAB, so they would have to spike the ball or get out of bounds to stop the clock. Hayden is in the backfield. Again, not Brown, but Hayden. So they spiked it, but then they ran it. Hayden looked as if he was trying to get the sidelines, but that's... They may have time to get off one more play, but it doesn't look like they're going to line up to try to do it. UAB is going to go into the half and be comfortable with a 24-13 lead. If it's the first college football game of the year, we're in for a great season. So many things happened in that first half. It was electric at the end of the first half. You see the scoreboard right there, the Blazers by 11. We'll be back in just a moment. To toot about, especially near the end of the first quarter going into the second quarter 24 13 your score chad pilcher my broadcast partner we'll take a look at some first half highlights and this was a half full of action uab early getting going star running back spencer brown with a nice run to get the first drive of the ball game off to a good start then the quarterback tyler johnston going down the field big post route the first big play of the night, passed down the field, and then Johnston finished off the drive, quarterback run to get into the end zone. But Alabama State comes right back. Deron Bell with a big time run. Breaks one tackle, and then he is off to the races to tie this ball game up early. Then the special teams, one of many big turnovers tonight. UAB fumbles, Alabama State recovers, and then they cash in immediately. 
go to the outside. Tyreek Allen with the touchdown catch. And then back on special teams for UAB, Myron Mitchell, who's been all over the field tonight. The huge return back shows the speed and then the awareness to cut all the way across the field. And he's going to finish it off with a dive and a flip into the end zone. But it just continued to be back and forth. There you see Davis, a scary moment where he gets rolled up, but he was okay. Takes another big lick there. And then Hill with a nice return gets to the out, up the field, but then the fumble, UAB recovers. And we've seen that back and forth all night long. Turnovers, and this time Johnston takes advantage. He goes down the field into the end zone. Great catch there by Kendall Parham. Another UAB touchdown, but Alabama State continuing to fight. Nice play there in the backfield. And defense starts to take over this time. Jerry and Street for UAB with a nice sack. All right, we'll be back with more halftime activities. UAB over Alabama State here at half. Was pre-surgery. That lit a fire under me. At the half of a very exciting game filled with a lot of big plays. We'll take a look at some of the stats and see if anything jumps off that page. Chad Pilcher. We expected UAB to run the football. They have 114 yards in the first half compared to 90 for Alabama State. UAB's thrown for 70, Alabama State 57. The total yards, not that big a difference. One turnover uh, for each team, but we also had a couple of pick sixes that have gotten called back because of penalties. And then you look at the penalty yardage about even here in this first half. Alabama State played right nose-to-nose, uh, -nose, mano a mano with UAB for most of that first half. And that, that long pass by Tyler Johnston, that touchdown pass, kind of got some separation for the Blazers. And uh, when you talk about Alabama State, the opponent tonight, uh, the winningest coach in their history, and again, they have a long history. We talked about it, nearly 500 wins in their program. But perhaps their greatest coach of all time uh, passed away in July, Houston Markham who left his uh, mark, matching his last name, on this program. Although he da had not coached in a couple of years there, but he was a mentor to all of the incoming coaches at Alabama State. We mentioned early in the broadcast that Alabama State leads this current series two to one. He's got both of those wins, Houston Markham Jr. May he rest in peace, passed away July 17th, not too long ago. We're at the half, UAB. We're back at Legion Field. This is a place with so much football history. It was hard for me not to walk in today and think about a member of the broadcasting fraternity, Rod Bramblett, who passed away, was killed in a car accident a little while ago, the Auburn play-by-play -play guy, and our condolences to his family. And again, when you come into a building where he had broadcasted a lot, just pay your respects. Well, we'll move on from that. Just wanted to send our respects to the family and the Auburn family. UAB and Alabama State put on quite a show, quite an entertaining first half here at Legion Field. We talked about the stats just a while ago. Not too much different in the stats. The one thing that jumps out, third down conversions so far tonight. Alabama State, zero of seven. UAB, zero of five. Both teams have attempted one fourth down conversion and have failed to convert. So we've seen some big plays. We've seen a couple of turnovers. We've seen a couple of penalties that have negated turnovers. But on third down, neither team has been that effective. And when you talk about third down, that's such a critical part of a football game. It's what enables you to keep drives alive and, and keep things moving. Neither team's been able to execute that well here tonight. The leading rusher for Alabama State is Deron Bell. Three carries, 70 yards, obviously had that long 67-yard touchdown. For UAB, Tyler Johnston is the leading rusher. Seven carries, 41 yards, and a touchdown. Hayden and Spencer Brown both have 38 yards rushing. Johnston through the air, 4 of 11 for UAB. Davis, 10 of 14 for Alabama State. And a touchdown. Both of those quarterbacks have a touchdown. Exciting first half. We'll see what continues to play out here in this first game, first week of the college football season. UAB with the lead, and they will also get the ball 
coming out of the end zone still on his feet and that didn't last long after he got contact and for Mitchell he gets back out to the 19 yard line he could have stayed in had the touchback and gone to the 25 but for coach Clark and UAB you're willing to take that risk with Mitchell we already saw the big touchdown return that he had 99 yards but because of his ability because of how electric he is in the return game and how much they believe the return game can be an impact for them you're okay losing six yards this time because you believe you're going to get a lot more yardage in the long run with him bringing those balls out. Mitchell limped off the field, by the way, at the end of that play. So the UAB Blazers at the 19. This is a first down and 10 to open up the third quarter. Simple running play. Brown out to about the 25. Spencer Brown on the ball carrier. We've been talking about Brown. One thing UAB did in that first half, they spread out the carries. That's Spencer Brown's 11th carry of the ball game. Hayden has six carries, and Johnston has seven. So three different runners getting very comparable number of carries running the football in that first half. Brown on the run again. Very short game this time. In fact, no game. A lot of beef inside that interior there for Alabama State. Taking a look at Christian Clark, he's first team preseason swack. Native of Euclid, Ohio, and he has anchored that line very well so far tonight. Complete to Mitchell, but I think he's short. Yeah, where they mark it, he'll be short of a first down. And that's the type of play you're going to go into the field room. It's going to be a real coaching point. They talk about the, the difference and how much you improve between week one and week two. That's a play, and Mitchell continuing to limp off. You want Mitchell to take that extra step, take that extra yard, and then come back, because what happened as he ran the comeback and he's coming back to his quarterback, he essentially ran back inside of the first down marker. Ball was put on the money by Johnston, but the route was just too short. And as a result, it's short of the line to gain, and UAB will be forced to punt. And punt they will. Fair catch. Inside the 30 is where Alabama State will start. Let's get back to that Mitchell play again. Chad, is it a feel for the first down? Or is it visual where he needs to take a peek? Or a little bit of both. Yeah, you typically have a depth of your of your route, and you're going to call the play accordingly. You know what route you're looking. But as a receiver, you have to be aware. You want to be aware of where the sticks are. Get there and sit down. Uh, and if you come back, go a little farther and then come back. So uh, it's a look. It's a pr thing you practice. The routes are certain distances, but at the same time, uh, the receiver has to have the awareness to get to the right spot. Kadaria Davis. Uh, I think he, had, he played a steady first half. Stayed away from turnovers. He's taken down behind the line of scrimmage. But Kadarius Davis uh, did not cost his team any turnovers or big plays or big mistakes. Uh, and the big thing for me, he's up near 70% completion percentage in that first half. Last season, he only completed 53% of his passes. So that's a great improvement that this coaching staff has to be really proud of. A lot of it is because of the play calling and the situations that they put him in and the pass plays that they've called a really good job by the ASU offensive staff. Using their tight end, Larry Brown, on more than one occasion. That one is just rifled through the middle. Nobody home. Pass from Davis in the lead. That was nicely defended by UAB. Noah Wilder, he's a guy that started his career at Gardner-Webb. He played at nearby Bessemer Academy. Went to Gardner-Webb, came back, sat out, and now he's earned a starting spot at this linebacker spot. He was in coverage there and did a nice job defending. Larry Brown has been the big receiver Tight end number 86. See if Darius, Kadarius uh, rather, looks for him. Went for somebody else. Incomplete. 
and we talk about it all the time, the way that pressure disrupts a play, the way it forces quarterbacks to get rid of the ball. That time, Fitz Mofor, who played middle linebacker last year, he's moved to the outside. That allows him to be a little more free and rush. He got into the backfield. He forced Davis to get rid of the football before he was ready to do so. And as a result, the ball sailed outside and incomplete. So one more time, we'll see this combination of Craven to Mitchell. And Mitchell will stand at his own 25. Now, Craven has hit a couple of 50-yarders. This one's going to take a ASU bounce as well. Mitchell gets the heck out of Dodge. That's inside the 15-yard line. So another good punt over 50 yards for Craven. Remember, he is preseason all Southwest Atlantic Conference. We'll be back with the Blazers in front. Of the Hornets here at Legion Field. The lights are on at, Re at uh, Legion Field. UAB up by 11. And a long field for the defending Conference USA champions. 11 and 3 overall last year, 7 and 1 inside of Kusa. Chad, they did something unusual last year. UAB had to play Middle Tennessee in back to back games. Yeah, just a, a quirk in the schedule. MTSU and UAB were the last game of the regular season. They were in different divisions. Uh, they both won their respective divisions. M MTSU defeated UAB that last game of the season. With a lot of guys went down injured, they come back the next week. They play the Conference USA Championship at the home site. They played it at MTSU, and UAB won 27-25 to to win that conference championship. And then they went on to uh, defeat Northern Illinois in a bowl game, the Boca Raton Bowl. A historic season for the Blazers. Bill Clark's team has won more games in each of their last two years. He's escalated wins. And again, the program was shut down for a couple of years, made national news. And it's one of the reasons why they, Bill Clark was the Eddie Robinson National Coach of the Year last year. School record 11 wins and their first ever trophy. Fumble. UAB back on top of it. Actually gained a couple of yards on the fumble. Maybe. And that's one thing is that UAB just hasn't been as crisp as I think Coach Clark would like them to be here tonight. And you see here, dive play. Hayden just never had the ball. It came out the second he touched it. One thing from an offensive line perspective, Lee DeFore is the only returning offensive lineman. They've had to replace four guys on this offensive line. Now several have had playing time. David Galton played in all 14 games last year. He didn't start, but he played in a number of games. He got a couple of junior college guys that have come in, but it's an offensive line that's never played together until tonight. Another fair catch called for by Hill. That'll take us to a break as Alabama State will have it right around the midfield marker. UAB in front of Alabama State in this intra-state battle. Back in a moment. You are my son. Stinks! Stinks! State stinks? <laughs> Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. At Legion Field, a good look at the historic press box where Keith Jackson used to call many, many a college football game. When I was a little kid growing up, he was doing the Iron Bowl right in this press box, right in the same booth. Whoa, I'm waiting for you to break out a whoa, Nelly. <laughs> Kadarius Davis in Alabama State on offense. They'll stay on the ground. Deron Bell on the carry. No gain. Nice job by Luke Brazier that time, getting in the backfield, making that tackle. Good job of Brazier pursuing, getting up the field. Oh, four there as well. Very short game for Alabama State. For Alabama State, 
it's just a two-score game. You're looking for that one play. Can you string a drive together, put a number of plays together, or can you make a big play? The tempo, we thought both these offenses would be fast tempo. The tempo has been very slow here in the second half. That'll pick up the pace a little bit. Good yardage. And that's what you're usually looking for. Can you pick up a first down and then get things going? That was a nice run that time by Ezra Gray. Being patient and getting to the outside. Takes a hit and then continues to fight forward. As finally Wilder is there to finish off the play. But a first down. And for Alabama State, move the chains, move the chains, pick up positive yards, and then you, maybe you take a shot. But that's a nice pickup of a first down. In UAB territory, Davis and Alabama State. A rare keeper, a couple of yards forward for Davis. I don't remember him calling his number a whole lot. But a safe play, Chad. Absolutely. Not Better than a turnover. He's not afraid to run the football, but right. it's not really his forte. We talked about it coming into this ball game. Typically, you would see Pearson, the backup quarterback, be more of the runner. He went out injured in that first half, so he's now out. And I think Davis has done everything you've wanted him to do uh, so far here tonight. Had a couple of little mistakes here and there, but he's played a very solid football game, put his team in a good position. Trying to get a man on the outside edge. There is a flag down. And that's the shot you're talking about. That time you run a corner route, get to the outside. Pretty good ball by Davis, as we said. Threw it out where his guy would have a chance to go get it. There is a flag down on the play. Holding. Defense number seven. Ten-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Intended receiver was Jeremiah Hickson. And a defensive holding called on the Blazers, so here come Alabama State. Closer to the red zone. And Jerry and Street, we talked about that star position being a hybrid. Sometimes you're going to be on the line of scrimmage playing uh, rushing or playing the, the linebacker type spot. Sometimes you're going to be in coverage. And that time he was in coverage, he held on. The flag comes out, and that's going to give Alabama State another first down. They'll hike it from the Blazer 30. About three yards on the rush. Ezra Gray on the carry. Gray is their first team running back, and Chad and I mentioned he's also an excellent special teams performer. In fact, he was chosen as all conference preseason for his uh, play on special teams. to Corey Merritt with a simple run. That was a nice job defensively there by UAP. What we've seen the last few plays is Alabama State getting a really good push from their offensive line. Going from picking up one or two yards to picking up three, four, five yards. But a nice short gain there. As you see, nice job coming from the backside by Alex Wright. To slow that play down, that makes it a third down and four for the Hornets. It is Merritt who is in the backfield. He's listed as the third string running back. Let's see if Davis can find Larry Brown. He gets a man inside the 10 for a first down. And what a great play by Davis that time. UAB brought pressure from the secondary. They blitzed. They also had two defenders on the receiver that time, but Davis just sits in the pocket. He delivers it. Great throw. Watch the replay here, and you'll see it. Two UAB defenders just puts it in the right spot. Great throw. Great job. Takes out our guys with the on the sidelines. But Alabama State in business inside the 10-yard line. Hickson on the reception. And Davis over the middle, incomplete. Intended again for Hickson. I don't think that UAB anticipated that Alabama State would be able to move the ball as much as they have. Well, they've done a great job. The, the reality is this UAB defense lost a lot, but they felt confident with what they have 
had coming back. But until you put these guys out on the field, uh, a lot of young guys getting opportunities out here, you don't know how it's going to react. I give a lot of credit to the Alabama State play calling, but the guys are making plays at this point in the ball game. This is a second down pass, caught, and then down quickly. Lost his footage to Lysian Farmer, one of the tight ends. And there's an also a, an injured Hornet back two. That's Brown, the tight end. Those look like cramps. We talked about it. It was a, this is not one of those 90 plus days here in Birmingham, but it's still pretty hot. And any time early in the year you, you expect to see cramps, that's exactly what that is right there. We actually got two guys down with cramps. And take right it from, from Dr. Bloom, and, and again, you played sports. If you're playing a game like this on a Thursday night, you've got to hydrate yourself around Tuesday. You cannot wait to day of the game and start drinking liquid after liquid after liquid. It's not going to work. You've got to give yourself about two days or so to get that in your system. And there's Brown walking away. And like you said, it was a cramp. You always see those types of things early in the season just because it's so hot. What did the uh, the water boy say? That, that That's uh, some high quality H2O? <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> that's, your, that's your area. That's your turf, right? Big third down here for Alabama State. Wouldn't be surprised to see them potentially put Davis on the move. Uh, do you flush, roll him outside the pocket, give him an opportunity for the receivers to work in open space, and then potentially he has an opportunity to run it if the opportunity is there. Well, well, Brown, we'll see what they do. The guy that you'd like to hit in this red zone is Brown, but he's the one that walked off because of the cramp. Over the middle, caught, touchdown, Hornets! Joshua Knight! He was matched up man-to-man -man with A.J. Brooks. Did a great job of winning at the line of scrimmage, getting inside, and Kadarius Davis delivered a strike into the end zone for a touchdown. ASU. They're going to leave the offense on the field and go for two. Currently trailing by five. If they're able to convert, that would cut it to a three-point game. Part of this is because they missed an extra point early in the ball game. Incomplete, knocked away. And back at the end zone. Take a look at that one more time. You just ask your guys to win one-on-one -on -one battles. That's what it did there for Knight. The score's 24 to 19, UAB leading ASU. Back in a moment. Back. So all hail the queen of spice. Hail the queen. That's right. And get a free six piece when you mobile order through the app. Back, bring them back. Third quarter action, Chad. I hope that's not one of your properties over there. That is the old field house at UAB. We talk about this program coming back and how much it's changed. Now they have a beautiful practice facility, and that's the old facility. That's a rather symbolic action, too, is that that old facility, which showed what the program used to be, is now gone. There's actually two players that are still left from that 2014 team, Lee Dufour and Nick Vogel. They're still here. They're still a part of this program. They're sixth year. And earlier this week, Vogel joked about the fact that he had been here so long and been around this program. He's seen it all from the program going away to coming back. Vogel said there was a tear in his eye when he saw the deconstruction of the well, field house. And when he came here, UAB's locker room was in the basketball coliseum in Bartow Arena. They then built and moved into that facility. He said he was promised that facility when he was being recruited, and now he's been here so long that the facility he was promised is being torn down, and you've got this wonderful uh, new facility that really is indicative of where this UAB program uh, has come. And the With that said, tonight's the night where they got to get going. UAB came into this game almost a 40-point favorite Woo. from the spread. We're here with five minutes and 24 seconds left in this third quarter. They're only up by five. 
Tyler Johnston in the Blazers offense at the 21 of UAB. Brown with some running room, some rare space for Spencer Brown. One would have to say, Chad, relatively quiet for Brown. This, this is a really nice run of following your blockers, taking a hit, breaking through, and then getting extra yardage after contact. That's what Brown is so good at. This is the time in the game where things are getting late. You've been pounding all night where Brown could potentially break off a big run. Will it be this one? Nice yardage, not a first down, but a plus six. But what you did see on that play and the play before is you're getting a good push from that offensive line. The point of contact is moving down the field, whereas earlier in this ball game, Brown was being hit fairly early in the play right around the line of scrimmage. Now it's a couple of yards down on these last two plays. We mentioned this earlier, that offensive line, with the exception of Dufour, is completely rebuilt. Tough place to lose some people that move on. Johnston should have the first down. There's a helmet off and a flag down. It's one of those offensive linemen, David Galton, without his Personal helmet. foul, hands to the face, defense number 11. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, automatic first down. And that's why Galton lost his helmet. There's some beef up front there, Chad. Colby Raglan, 300 pounds. David Galton, 310. Lee Duford, 310. Andrew Smith, 300. Sidney Wells, 330. But with the exception of Dufour, four of those five guys. And that's, a, 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 again, a tough replacement there to get four new linemen in. And this is one of the areas where Coach Clark was really anxious to see how they were going to play. No matter how talented, it takes time to mesh as an offensive line unit. Third straight time for Brown. That was a first down carry. Second and long for the Blazers as they are in Alabama State territory. Five-point game, third quarter. Who would have thought that? Kind of marvelous. And there you see it, the all-time leading rushers in UAB history coming into this football game. Spencer Brown sitting at number three. Pat Green had 28, just over 2,800 yards from 91 to 94. Joe Webb, the quarterback, had 2,774 yards from 2006 to 2009. Assuming he stays healthy, there is no doubt that Spencer Brown is going to break that record and become the all-time leading rusher. But look at the guy just right behind him, Jordan Howard, who's had a phenomenal NFL career uh, and obviously played here at UAB uh, as well. So Spencer Brown poised to do some really special things here for this UAB program. And I would argue as he goes, so goes this UAB team. I think you're going to see over time, the hope is that this offensive line will gel. They will come together. They'll begin to provide more opportunities for Brown. I think it's great for Brown to have Hayden as such a change-up back. It's going to give him some rest. It's going to make potentially open up more holes for Brown because Hayden is so different in the way that you have to prepare. And then as the passing game evolves, obviously that opens up more opportunities to run the ball because that's the one big thing that came out of uh, last season is how many receivers UAB lost. They lost their top five receivers from last year. They, they accounted for 123 catches and 2,285 yards and 16 touchdowns. That is all gone from this UAB receiving core. And I know we're talking about Brown and running the ball, but it's directly correlated. If you're, if you're able to spread the field, go down the field throwing the football, that's going to open up more running lanes. It's going to loosen that defense up. So I think what UAB and what Coach Clark is seeing is he's waiting to see uh, this team, this offense of all, because the reality is when you lose over 30 players, your team is going to be different. That's a lot of guys who played a lot of snaps, and they're no longer here, so it's new guys having to fill that role. One way I look at it, Chad, if you lose 30 and you only have 22 on the field without your special teams, you've lost a team and a half. And Coach Clark had been talking about that. Spencer Brown, by the way, here's a broadcaster's word for you, pedestrian, a pedestrian 15 rushes for 57 yards. 
is always capable of breaking that big one, and that 50 yards could go to uh, on one play. Johnston finds a man. Hayden Pittman, the tight end, I believe that's his first reception. Junior from from Spanish Fort. Quick roll, just get it into the flat. Nice job there. To get upfield, make a nice game by Pittman. Third and short for the Blazers. Chad mentioned during the broadcast that both teams have had really a lot of trouble. We're going to get a flag here on third down conversions. Ball start. Offense. And there you 62. go. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. From third and three to third and eight. That's a big difference. Obviously, Pittman's a guy from Spanish Fort, Alabama, along with Tyler Johnston. Johnston's brother's a linebacker, Thomas Johnston, also from Spanish Fort. And then the offensive coordinator, Bryant Vincent, was a former head coach at Spanish Fort, so a big Spanish Fort connection uh, here in Birmingham on this UAB football team. UAB backed up. And so Johnston now goes to the air. Got a man open. It is caught. Still on his feet. Jonathan Hayden. The ball came loose there. Well, let's see who gets it. It was taken away, so says public address announcer. And are we looking at another turnover, another big play? Johnston gets rid of the ball, gets it in between the defenders. Nice catch by Hayden. Clearly a catch. Great job of ripping the ball out. Clearly a fumble there as well. Outstanding play by Earshot Davis to rip the ball out. And then the recovery by Donnell Thomas for ASU. That is another huge play for this Alabama State defense. Donnell Thomas trying to get up. And how many times have we said that huge play in this game? It just feels like momentum swings back and forth. It's, it's, you see these plays that are just huge swings in the momentum and what's happening in this ball game. There UAB is. They're about to be inside the 10-yard line going in. Instead, a great play to strip the ball by Davis. Ball comes out, and now here Alabama State gets the ball back, just trailing by five. You know, it's not a heavyweight fight, but it's more like two middleweights just exchanging blows. Hagler and Hearns. And so here we go with Alabama State. They, they score here. They will take the lead. We are near the end of the third quarter, but instead Davis is sacked by the UAB defense. That's one thing this UAB defense hoped to do with Beaufort, moving him to the outside, giving him more opportunities to come off the edge, come up with sacks, big time sack there by the senior Fitz Beaufort. Alabama State has to make sure they do not commit a turnover. Inside the 10, they go conservative with a handoff. And that's not even going to get back to the yard uh, line of scrimmage. Well, they played it safe, Chad. And that's what happens when you have a big play where you lose yardage. It just disrupts the entire series. Doesn't matter what happens, and there's another cramp on the I'll tell you, we hide sometimes. Happened and man, that is a not a good feeling at all. And another uh, thing that happens when you get older, <laughs> those guys on the field don't have to worry about it. But every once in a while, I try to get out of bed. And I'm like, whoa, that calf. Where did that calf muscle go? Let's try. To, let's. We'll, uh, we got a shot of that fumble again. And at this point, it's a huge play in the ball game. Nice throw there by Johnson. Hayden. 
makes a play. It's just a great individual effort by Davis to rip the ball out. And then right spot, right time. There's Thomas there to recover. He ended up hobbling coming up after he made that play, but a great job of getting on the football on what is a huge uh, game-shifting moment. Now Alabama State is pinned back after that vote for sack, but nonetheless, UAB would have been in uh, inside the red zone with an opportunity to put points on the board. Instead, Alabama gets the ball back, but now facing a third and long. DeAndre Brown, 6'6", 300 from Tampa. Everybody on that O-line for Alabama State clears three bills by a lot. And I was told that Joe Blackwell, their offensive coordinator, asked them to all lose a little weight, get into better shape. Third and 16, Chad. Go to the air. Certainly the way the offense is lined up. One setback, now in motion. Safe pass. And just past the original line of scrimmage for Deron Bell. As you said, a safe play call there. They pick up eight yards. They wanted to just get Bell on the outside, a conservative play call, and see if he could potentially use his speed to pick up the first down. Nice pursuit by the UAB defense. And the UAB defense, the offense has not done much in this second half. The defense came up big, and it all started with that sack. When you start a play behind the sticks, it changes the entire tone and the entire approach of that offensive series. That's what happened there, and now Alabama State lined up to punt it away. Should be good field position for UAB. Craven. And then a fair catch. So says Myron Mitchell. UAB with 28 seconds to go will take over third quarter. They are out in front. Pretty good field position. They'll start things at the 36. Yeah, but the UAB offense just looking to get something going. They've had a couple of plays here and there, including the fumble on that last drive, but just have not consistently, especially in this second half, been able to put back-to-back -back plays together put themselves in a position to extend this lead. I still think we're going to hear from Spencer Brown before this one is done. And that is Brown on the hip pocket of his quarterback. They bottle him up pretty good. When you watch UAB practice, by the way, Johnston and Brown are never too far apart. They are separated by about a couple of feet, no matter where they go, very close. Obviously, the heart and soul of the UAB offense. Where you see one, you'll see the other. A couple of uh, talented young players. Brown, a junior. Johnston, redshirt sophomore, so they came in together. There's your scoreboard. It's a five-point lead for UAB. We'll start the fourth quarter when we come back. Dr. Riley spoke my language. He says, there's a problem, we're gonna go fix it. 15 minutes remaining in this game. Let's take a look at the preseason poll. Marshall picked to win the East Division. North Texas picked to finish first in the West. You see there UAB finished fourth, picked to finish fourth in the West Division. They were picked to finish third last year in the West and ended up winning the entire conference. Tyler Johnston, near sideline, caught by Mitchell. And that's just an excellent throw, excellent understanding your receivers, understanding where you need to be. That was good coverage by Keenan Isaac, but just a better job by Mitchell of coming back, catching the football, 25-yard gain for UAB. Blazers now in Alabama State Territory. Brown. About three or four for Brown, maybe five. 
but when you're able to throw and catch the ball down the field, that opens it up. The defense has to respect that and fall off a little bit. Typically happens, and that opens up a nice running lane. Looks it's, it's, now we're going to have a play under review. It's like uh, Brown is, is one block away or one move away from breaking out into the open and getting a long run. There is Spencer right there. And Kirk, with this review, this has got to be going back to – I thought they got that running play off, but this has got to be right. going back to, to the, the completion reception. to Mitchell to see what I would imagine is did he get his feet down inbound. So they're going to go back. The officials are looking at that now. Once we, uh, or as, as we say, uh, get it right. And we'll see here Johnson threw it and threw it underneath where Mitchell had to come back and get the football. His hands in. I thought he got that left foot down. That right foot may have landed on the line, but I thought he had his hands and got that left foot down. You see the uh, side judge, or the field judge there writing something down, likely where he went out of bounds so they could mark the line that was gained in the appropriate spot. Well, my last guess was completely wrong, so. I'm getting out of the guessing business, at least for now. We, we saw the replay there. It looked as if his right foot may have landed on the line when it came down, but I thought that left foot got down in bounds, and it looked to me as if he had possession of the football when that left foot got down. Of course, in the college game, you only need one foot in. Play is still under review. And a big call, and and I think you hit it, Chet. I thought they got the running play off. It looks to me there. There's that left foot is in bounds. The only thing is, did he bobble the ball as he was bringing it down? If he may, if on that review, that was a great job of slowing that down. And as you see, as he's bringing that ball in, it looked as if maybe he bobbled that football. They're taking time. This tells me they are potentially going to reverse that. And I didn't see it that first time. I saw the left foot get in. But as he was bringing that ball in, it looks as if he may have bobbled it. But we'll, we'll wait for the call. review, the receiver was out of bounds. It's an incomplete pass, 39 at the 37. I didn't see that. Now you know why I'm out of the guessing game. And Coach Clark disagrees with that call as well. UAB did the right thing by trying to get off another play. You'd mentioned that. And so we see a flag come out of nowhere. And you're right, it was attached to the previous play, which was, we thought, a reception. And we had a pretty good look there. I thought on second look maybe there was a bobble that right foot we'll watch it one more time that right foot certainly landed on the out of bounds but i thought the left foot if you see right there's the catch and that left foot is down right there and if he has possession of the football right there that's a that, that's close i i thought he had the foot in and the only thing is if that ball bobbled but they didn't seem to indicate that the ball was bobbled so um, that's a tough break for UAB on what would have been a big game. Yeah, field position. They'll get some of it back on the reception to Par by Parham. That's a big response there by UAB to immediately come up and get that first down on what was a third and nine play to pick up that first down. That is a big response. Nice throw by Johnson. We'll see. Are they going to call this incomplete as well? Injury on the in the secondary. What would make that incomplete? Did you see anything at all that would? All right, we'll take a timeout. We'll figure this all thing out when we come back. We're now in the fourth quarter, and the Blazers lead by five. Yeah. Back, bring them back. 
Scotty broke his neck. He's truly the closest person I've ever met to Superman. We are surviving. at Legion Field, five-point lead for UAB. Fourth quarter, and Alabama State has been hanging tough. And on a night where attendance 39,165, third largest home crowd in UAB football history, we have a tight game. Here in the fourth quarter with Alabama State just trailing by five, and they have the ball back. You can see the tension on this UAB sideline and in the stands. Deron Bell on the carry. It's only one minute gone by here in the fourth. Time is not a factor for Alabama State. Can they come up with a big play? Kadarius Davis deserves a lot of credit for this, Chad, keeping his team within striking distance. Just not made mistakes. Shoots one down over the middle and incomplete. Trying to get that ball to Hickson that time. Thrown a little bit too low by Davis. And now he'll have an opportunity for a third down conversion. That has not been a strong suit of Alabama State, either last year or here tonight. But here is an opportunity for Davis in a big game. Late in the ball game, you're looking to make a play. We've talked about Davis taking that step forward and really propelling this Alabama State team here in this season. This is a big opportunity on third and eight. Let's see if UAB brings some pressure. So a safe running call instead. And it looks like a first down for Alabama State. Deron Bell again, he gets eight. What a gutsy call that was, Chad. I don't think any of us thought it, that it was going to be an inside sweep, inside the run. Well, UAB preparing for a pass there and a good job by Bell of getting to the outside, finding the open space and picking up that first down. Davis rifles it in. He puts a lot of velocity on his throws. And again, it's Jeremiah Hickson. There's an RPO look there that time for Davis. Fires it over the middle, as you said it, and a rocket over the middle. Good coverage in the secondary by Dawkins, but a better catch there by the Hornets. Excellent timing play. Now Davis taken down. A little miscommunication on the handoff. And Jerry and Street, the star position, makes the play a minus three on that. Trying to read it here is Davis. Just a miscommunication on that option look. Ball comes out on the ground, but Davis fortunate to fall back on it. Still a third and very manageable five. Now, moments ago, Alabama State kept it on the ground instead of a pass. This looks like pass. It is an incomplete. No flag on the play. Intended for Joshua Knight. And Dijon Turner did a good job of getting in there, making contact, and breaking that play up. You can tell you are late in a hot August football game. Guys starting to cramp up. You've been playing all night. This is, we're three hours into this football game. Still another almost 12 minutes of game time remaining. These guys. It just takes it out of you as you're out here in this heat. Yes, it's nighttime, but it is still hot. That's Leeward Brown, the left guard, and you've got some more information about yep. Leeward Brown and his family. Leeward's brother is named Leeward, and his dad is named Leeward. So it's a uh, full house. <laughs> yeah. Here's what happened. Family. When you call up, you say, can I speak to Leeward? And the answer is speaking. <laughs> the punt by Craven. 
And it's going to take an Alabama State bounce. Look at that, inside the five. This Craven has had a big night. That's why he's an all-conference performer. He just flipped the field and changed the entire possession. 64 yards on the punt. Fourth quarter, plenty of time to go. We'll be back. Alabama State able to flip the field thanks to their all-conference punter. It's Anthony Craven. He's up for the Ray Guy Award at the FCS level. And we'll wait and see early jump by Alabama State, but then a false start, start. by UAB. Offense number five. Penalties half the distance to the goal, remains first down. So they end up getting Myron Mitchell. Tried to go the hard count again. A couple of defensive linemen for ASU jumped, but did not go across the line, or was able to get back, and then Mitchell flinched. And that's what pushes UAB back. You have about four Blazers in the end zone as this ball will be hiked. And Johnston to the air, wants to go long, and it's knocked down on a beautiful defensive play. Natron Culpepper goes up and makes the play, trying to get the ball down the field to Austin Watkins. He had Culpepper beat. That ball was underthrown by about three or four yards. That allowed Culpepper to go up and bat it down. Culpepper only a sophomore, one of those transfers from South Florida. And he just saved a long touchdown. Second and 12. You see both Johnston and Brown in the end zone, about four yards deep. Brown gets it out of the shadows of the goal line. Just one yard on the carry. And there's an injured lineman down now for the Blazers. That looks like David Galton, and it is. Well, we mentioned UAB. They were picked fourth in the preseason. Where do you find Alabama State? Alabama State also picked fourth. They're in the East Division of the SWAC, they're picked fourth. They finished fourth last year uh, to finish out the year. Alcorn State picked to win the Eastern Division of the SWAC and Southern picked to win the West Division. But as you say, these preseason polls, they're typically based on what you do last year and what's happened in your offseason. And then we're just making a decision based on what we saw on the field and what's happened on paper between last year and this year. So, but nonetheless, I think a lot of times polls they set the expectations or they provide motivation potentially for a football team for both these teams they're picked fourth in their divisions that is motivation UAB last year they were able to go from a picked third to win the entire thing last year Alabama State they were picked second ended up finishing fourth in their division really had some injuries and just didn't play up to the capability that they expected to uh, they're looking to bounce back and I'll tell you this this has been a good start here tonight they, they've kept themselves in the ball game. They've made plays. They've not allowed UAB to get a big play, to extend the lead. And, and just think about what we've seen in the last four snaps. We saw Craven with an excellent punt. Perfect execution. Gets a great roll. That's what pins UAB back. UAB decides to take a shot. Receiver gets behind the defender but did not execute. Didn't make the throw that they needed to make, which would have been six. If you get the ball out there, it's catch. It's a catch, and you're likely taking that to the house. That ball was a little bit underthrown, and as a result, you now have the third and ten backed up all the way at your own three-yard line. And going back to that punt, if Alabama State can get a stop here, they have an opportunity to get great field position, only needing a touchdown to take the lead. Still plenty of time. There'll be plenty of possessions. But in about six or seven minutes, we're going to have to take that phrase out of the vocabulary. And you won't have plenty of time and plenty of possessions. 
Alabama State looking for a stop. Trying to pin UAB deep. We've got a flag. Ball start. Offense, number 62. Five yard, half the distance to the goal. Main third down. Sidney Wells, the guilty party. And that time, you've got a lot of shifting by UAB pre-snap. That's hard for those linemen to sit in. You want them to concentrate, focus in. But just unable to do so. Wells rocks a little bit, and that backs UAB up about a yard and a half. Got a man and just overthrew him that time. Second time in this set of downs that Tyler Johnston just failed to connect. One was underthrown, one was overthrown. At the previous play, it was man to man. This time they had man underneath with a safety rolling over the top. There was room, the ball just overthrown by just a little bit. So twice trying to get the ball out to Watkins. Once on that drive, it's underthrown. Once it's overthrown, both of which had an opportunity for big time plays. Johnston now is seven for 18. Just over 100 yards passing. Meanwhile, Arizona or uh, Alabama State rather is going to get good field position. The return will take it at about the 35 yard line. So just prior to our game, we were asked, Chad and I were asked, who do we think might be in the final four or in the football, college football playoffs? And uh, this is what we have come up with. Uh, you went uh, you went bold there, huh? So I, I started mean, you, with you Alabama really number the one, because I'm here in Birmingham, Clemson <laughs> two. Look, Michigan-Ohio State, who's going to win that right, one? Right. Uh, but both of us have Clemson, and why not? With what they've done uh, last year, I think the consensus is that Alabama and Clemson are 1-2. We both have them. Well, you have Oklahoma number two. You've got Alabama three, but you've got Clemson ultimately winning. Uh, those programs have established themselves year after year. Yeah, it's not like either one of us, you know, picked some random team out of because we wanted to make uh, – you know, history, national news, Jeremiah Hickson on the catch. When talk about making news, this is Alabama State's opportunity. You're at 10 minutes. Right. This is the best field position you're probably going to get for the rest of this ball game, all because you got a great punt by your punter. You got a great stop defensively. Now here you are starting inside the 40-yard line and a nice gain there on first down. So impressive. The composure by Katarius Davis. Now he finds a man, Gray towards the end zone and he steps out of bounds it's uh, Duran Bell rather Bell close enough to the end zone where Alabama State is now on the door and how huge has Bell been tonight we talked about that big 67 yard run in the first half but he's been their go-to guy here in this second half and here he goes making guys miss right there what a great spin move by Bell then getting down the field inside the 10 yard line first and goal for Alabama Time State UAB their first, 30 seconds. 24-yard gain. Well, Duran Bell has had a pretty big night on the ground. And if I'm Coach Hill Ely, I'm approaching this as this is four-down territory. I've got 10 minutes left in the ball game, so it's a good bit of time, but I'm probably not going to – I'm betting that I'm not going to get this good a field position again. I am – just inside the five-yard line. I'm telling my guys, you got four plays to get it in. You go with your best four plays, and you see if you can't uh, take the lead here in this ball game. And your defense has played well enough. Put them on the field. You're exactly right. We just saw it with UAB pinned back. Now, UAB had a couple opportunities on the deep ball that they didn't take advantage of. But you're right. Your defense has played well. Even if you don't get it, you still continue to keep UAB pinned back. Big time series here. First and goal for Alabama State. The running back is Bell. One of the O-line linemen for Alabama State driving his guy back, but at the same time, you, you get close to a flag and there, not a smart play. not afford at this point in the ball game to get some kind of unsportsmanlike. Actually, a great job of restraint there by the official. But look at this run by Bell. Head down, straight ahead. His helmet comes off, so helps come out of the ball game. And that'll take it even closer inside the five. Now the official will mark it at the one. 
Third down and one. The Hornets. No. And that's Merritt in the backfield, and we've seen him in the ball game in a couple of crunch time situations. That time he fights forward, but just unable to get into the end zone. Fourth down here. Alabama State's going to call a timeout. You see Merritt fighting forward, but a great job by the UAB defense to continue to pursue, to run after the football. Will Dawkins doing a great job of holding on. Alabama State called a timeout. They are clearly going forward on this fourth down, as they should. Chad, if we start eliminating plays, Kadarius Davis has rarely called his own name. I remember just once. I don't think it's a quarterback keeper. No, there's two options here, in my opinion. You're either going to continue to run it straight ahead, just like you've done the last three plays, or or do you do some kind of bootleg play action? Everybody, I think everybody's going to be selling out for the run. So do you take the risk of let's fake it, go to the outside? So I think that's your two options. My money's on, look, we've been able to ram this forward throughout this drive. Let's try to do it again. I want to see if 86, Larry Brown, gets back on the field. I haven't seen his number in a little while, but he'd be the perfect red zone target if you were going to throw the ball. Merritt going into the game in the backfield. Clearly the short yardage guy for ASU. This crowd is up on its feet. Called his own number, couldn't get in. They had a fullback, had a tailback, tried to go off the edge with Davis, the quarterback, and just incredible pursuit. This UAB defense sniffed that out from the word go. Did a great job of getting upfield. Mo Ford in the backfield early. He makes the first contact, able to bring him down. Also a nice play there by Noah Wilder getting in the backfield, being a part of the tackle, and that play was perfectly read by the UAB defense. Mofor coming from the outside, gets up and blows it up, and that's a huge stop by the UAB defense to preserve this lead. What separates UAB from a lot of their opponents is that they have a size and speed back in Spencer Brown. That would have been an easy gift to Spencer Brown. Alabama State doesn't have that kind of weaponry. They called the rare quarterback keeper, and they actually lost two yards. That said, UAB a long, long field, and here is Brown falling forward. And for UAB on this drive, the first point of focus is get a first down. Can you pick up a first down, give yourself some breathing room, and get that clock to continue to move? Because now the clock becomes your friend if you can pick up first downs. I imagine we're going to see them take run this play clock down as far as they can go on every single play use up as much as you can and you hope at this point in the ball game Spencer Brown can start to wear down the ASU defense keeper for Johnston gets the edge and a first down nice ball fake he did a really nice job there pulling it. And you'll see on the outside, Hayden Pittman gets a nice block. Here he comes outside, bam, right there. And that's what allows Johnson to pick up about 10 extra yards. And there UAB is able to get that breathing room. Under eight to go. Tyler Johnston marches his team from the shadows of the goal line. We'll see if we get a dose of Brown. We do. Even when he gets bottled up, he's able to lean forward and get you somewhere between two and four. In this case, he'll get five. But 
Just still waiting for that home run. He doesn't have it yet. Gets to the outside and watch him finish the drive, get behind his legs, push forward. He takes the defender with him and a good push by Spencer Brown on that run. You see what Johnston is doing now. He is using the entire play clock before he snaps this football. Halfway towards the first down for Brown. Stays inside his leg strength and his upper body. Just incredible. And he will get an important first down for UAB. So just two rushes that time. Five and five for Brown and a first down. If you're Alabama State, Chad, you got to make sure he doesn't get loose. Contain him. Know where number four is. Three wides for Johnston on the far side. Make that two. Brown gets hit but stays on his feet. Well, Chad, he's starting to pile up some yards now. You mentioned earlier his strength that he would start to wear some people out. Maybe this is the drive where he's doing it. That's three straight carries and three straight times where he's picked up five or more yards. And you've seen on those plays where he's not going down at first contact. He's being hit. He's continuing to either push forward or break through that tackle uh, and continue to move forward. He is a junior and We've already mentioned some of the numbers. He's already one of the greatest running backs in the history of UAB football. And bottled up that time. Nothing doing. The trio of Alabama State defenders. One of them is Andrew Ogletree. You've called his name a few times. You'll see Ogletree at the end, number 92. He's got a cramp or a leg issue and when you know the run is coming you can go ahead and walk down bring an extra defender into the box and just make it much more difficult to run the football a little surprised Johnston snapped that ball with about 10 seconds left on the clock surprised they're not letting that run down another seven or eight seconds get it down to three or two before you snap the football you look at the clock there on your television, Chad, that's still plenty of time if Alabama State can get a stop and they can move the ball, they could pull off a incredible program upset. On the other side, UAB keeps handing it off to Spencer Brown, their workhorse. And that time he lost three yards. And just thinking about this game and the way it's evolved, one thing that stood out is you felt that late in that first half, UAB got a score. They they started to, you felt like the momentum was in their favor. They scored a touchdown with four minutes and 35 seconds left in that second quarter to extend the lead to 24-13. UAB has not scored a single point here in this second half. And I think part of that is they've had a couple mistakes, but Alabama State's defense has been up to the challenge. They have answered the bell and made play after play after play. And Travis Pearson first year as defense coordinator. He was previously on this staff, but this is his first year. Look, Alabama State replaced both of their coordinators. Uh, Coach Ely Hill re realized, excuse me, Hill Ely realized that he had to make a difference. You go four and seven, he needs something different. He took over back in 2017, halfway through the season. Alabama State was 0-5. He won five out of his next six. There were a lot of expectations last year, but they went four and seven. So he made the change. He brought in two new coordinators and Coach Pearson has done a fine job here tonight with this ASU defense. A big third down here and another opportunity for his squad to make a play. Sometimes the most simple of changes is changing the culture where you got to convince these guys we're not a losing team. We are a winning program. I'm sure. Timeout. UAB, their second. It's never easy to tell some of your friends and people that you've been with, look, we got to make a change. Anyways. Alabama, or uh, UAB rather, UAB up on Alabama State. We'll be back with the last five minutes and 24 seconds. Uh, 
Okay, we're still at least. And it will be UAB one more time, trying to get a first down. Short pass, caught. Then stretching for the first down marker. I don't know if he's got it. Marcus Grossman. That was a great effort by Grossman. He may have had it on first catch, but he got pushed back. And then what a great job of staying on his feet and diving forward, stretching the football out to ensure that he picked up that first down. That is a huge conversion there for UAB to keep this drive alive. I don't think he gets it on the catch, but he gets it on the stretch. And that's just pure individual effort that time by Grossman. It was a quick out route into the flat. He made the catch, good pursuit by that ASU defense, but just unable to wrap up and bring him down. And the great second effort by Grossman ensures the first down. Brown on first down. Not a lot, just enough to move forward again. One yard, so at least uh, Brown and UAB didn't lose any ground. You're going to see another run here. Yes, at four and a half to go, yep. Bringing Larry Wooden into the football game. They're going to give Brown a rest. He had run it a number of times in a row, so he'll get a rest here. And on this second nine, UAB now wanting to use every second of that play clock, looking at 14 seconds left at this point. Johnston, the keeper. Still on his feet. Down at the 46, he'll be short of a first down. The clock continues to tick. Tyler Johnson is confident and tough. And you saw at the end of that play, I'm surprised it didn't stop his forward progress, but as he was being carried towards the sideline, he followed, finally just fell down to, to make sure that he didn't go out of bounds. We have another ASU defender down. Now, we're in territory right now, less than four minutes. You, you come here to win the game if you're Alabama State. But they have played so, so well. If you believe in moral victories and you believe in what they've done, I, that's up to the uh, coaches. 3.46 remaining. UAB by five. We'll be back. Not over. So we're not the best. This is our team. No matter what. UAB in possession. Under four minutes remaining. They're also in the lead. You know, that timeout might have given Spencer Brown just enough time to get some oxygen. Catch his breath. Tyler Johnston really milking that clock, Chad, as you mentioned. Yeah, they're going to want to run that all the way down. Now at 15. And after all that, Johnston swallowed up by the Alabama State defense. And that was a great read by Austin Brundage. It showed flow with the fake, and then Johnston kept it. Good, good timeout here by ASU. You see right there, there comes Johnston. And look at Brundage in the backfield, wraps him up. Had some teammates join him, but what a huge play. And that's what we've seen all night long by this ASU defense. They come up with the big plays when they need them. That was a third down there. UAB looking to convert. And a big time play by the defense. And for Alabama State, you start out with the defending conference USA champions. You come on the road. They're now going to go home for four straight games, and then they're going to finish up with five games on the road. So just a crazy schedule that Alabama State has coming up. They're going to love those four games at home, but that's a tough finish there at the end. But, man, what a start to this season. We'll see what happens in this next three minutes, but a great start to the season for Alabama State. 
Alabama State looking for a big punt return out of Joshua Hill, but he already signals for a fair catch. Well, this could be the final drive for Alabama State. Will it end with a euphoric celebration or will it end in bitter disappointment? They got to get into the end zone. And now it's decision time for UAB defensive coordinator David Reeves as he's getting ready for this drive. You got to decide how aggressive you look there at the UAB schedule. They're going to go to Akron next week at South Alabama at home, and then you get into the Conference USA schedule trip to Knoxville, Tennessee a little bit later down on November 2nd. But for now, they're focused on here. And can they come up with a play? How much pressure does Coach Reeves decide to bring, if any at all? Kadarius Davis has had a marvelous game. Caught for about four by Mixon. Hickson, rather. Big hit there by Thomas to finish off that drive. Coming to the football, big hit. And that for UAB, you will take all day. It's a gain of three, and the clock continues to run now. 30 seconds has already run off the clock since that play started. 80 yards to go for Alabama State. Some running room for Davis. He's got a first down on the slide, so he'll get to about the 30. And the problem there is they mark you where you start your slide. So he's actually short of the first down because he didn't pick up the first down. The clock continues to run. It's going to be under two minutes by the time they snap this football. So you understand the decision to slide, but that was very costly for Alabama State. Another momentum swing. That should have stopped the clock and given Alabama State a first down. Almost intercepted. And now you're going to face a fourth and one. Instead, if Davis had dove forward, we'll see here. UAB drops eight into coverage. That allows Davis to tuck the ball and run, but you see he starts to slide. So instead of where he lands, they bring him back where the slide started. Third down is unsuccessful, and now a fourth and one with a minute 43 seconds left. Obviously, if they don't convert, this will be the ball game. That's enough for a first down. Bell did exactly what they needed to do. The clock will stop while they move the chains. Good job by Bell getting behind his offensive line, diving forward. The clock is reset. The clock is now running once again as David looks to Davis looks to the sideline, get the play, taking a lot of time here for Alabama State. 70 yards to go for Alabama State. Flushed out, no penalty, so it's incomplete. Will Bowler has been a force in the secondary tonight for UAB. That time he was in coverage, did a good job of undercutting that one as the ball fell incomplete. Joshua Knight was the intended receiver. Alabama State with one timeout left. You might want to be in the spot where you would take a shot down the field. They like the short stuff. That's where they've been most successful. But down a minute and 13 left, maybe time to take a shot. Under pressure, flag down on the completion. And that's going to be against Alabama State, so that's going to negate that completion and bring them back. They were trying to go down the field, well defended by UAB. Davis used his legs and took the short drop off, but I believe that play is going to be coming back. What did you see, Chad, that you didn't like, or what did you see, rather, that caused the violation? Jordan Williams was about six yards down the field, so we'll see if they got that. And it understands, because you see Davis take off, you think he's running, and you release. But then it ultimately was a pass, and the lineman can't be down the field. Personal foul, hands to the face, defense, 15 yards, previous spot, automatic first down. I did not see that, and that's a huge penalty against UAB. 
you, can, you can live with a five-yard gain and the clock continues to run. Giving up 15 yards by penalty, that is a huge penalty at this point in the ball game. Alabama State now will be in UAB territory. 66 seconds left to go. Kadarius Davis will hike it from around the UAB 46. Five wideouts, nobody in the backfield. Davis lifts it. Incomplete, excellent coverage near side. Intended for Michael Jefferson, who's been very quiet tonight. That was incomplete, but that's the perfect time to take that shot. Excellent play call there by Joe Blackwell to take a shot down the field, see if you can't get something happen, or maybe you get a, a pass penalty. interference call yeah. and you pick up another down. Great play call. Now you're nothing lost. The clock is stopped, and you can take your time to call the second down play. Fake to Bell, over the middle, deflected. It's intercepted by the Blazers, and that should seal it. And we've talked about him a little bit earlier, and that is Will Bowler, who comes up with the interception on the last play of the game, off of the deflection. It went with a little quick play action, trying to get the ball over the middle. This UAB defense, it was so excellent all last year. That time, Kobe Griffin in the middle. He gets his hands up, deflects the ball. Will Bowler's there for the interception, and that is going to seal the deal on the night for UAB on what was a scary game for the Blazers. An excellent performance by Alabama State. But after that big interception, UAB is going to walk away from their first home game with the W. 13 straight. At here home. at Legion Field. Victory formation for the Blazers. If we talk about it, how are you going to improve from week one to week two? And I think that's one of the most critical things you see during a football season. I think both of these coaches are going to have some really nice takeaways on things their teams can improve on. For ASU, you got to be really, really pleased with the effort, the way these kids have came, came out and fight. For Coach Clark, his defense came up with the play. It wasn't the most crisp night. It was a little bit sloppy at times, but when the plays needed to be made, his offense put together a little bit of a drive, he brought the play out, used up some clock, and then when he gave it back, his defense came up with the play that needed to be made to seal the ball game. Excellent intrastate battle here. This is hopefully going to make other teams want to play other teams in the states. Alabama State should hold their heads way up high. You talked about the geographic proximity. I mean, this is a great crowd here tonight for opening night, playing on a Thursday. It's just a great way to kick off uh, the 2019 season. Tyler Johnston's going to get another win on his uh, record as well. With five to go. And our final is coming in. It will be UAB 24, Alabama State 19. The Hornets gave the Blazers everything they could ask for and then some. hear the mutual respect that these two teams and these two programs and these players have for each other. You never know coming into this first game, what do you have? You practice, you get prepared, but ultimately what's going to happen when the lights come on and you play for real uh, come game time? You never know till it happens. I think both these guys came out here and laid it on the line. We, we had a very entertaining football game here tonight. That's, that's the key word for me, entertaining. Our DIFP crew did a great job tonight, thanks to our spotter up in the booth, Jeff Spradlin, my color commentary coming from Chad Pilcher. He's the best. And for Dustin Wellborn and Mike Furco and the rest of the crew, this is Kurt Bloom saying so long from Legion Field. The final score, UAB 24, 
Alabama State, 19. This has been a presentation of ESPN 94.1.